Hello, everybody, and welcome to the ERCL Finals. This is the first ever major NA tournament, official uh, Nimble Neuron tournament, and I gotta say, I am extremely excited. I am joined here today by my good friend, Tom Sorcerer. Would like to introduce yourself. Hi, guys. Yeah, I'm Tom Sorcerer. I am one of the uh, NA content creators for this game. I've been playing an absolute ton, uh, probably a little bit too much recently, and I am just a guy who grinds solo a little too often. Absolutely love this game. I joined Skaz last time for the ERCL, or ERCS and for the qualifying match for the ERCL. I've been having a great time. How are you? I'm doing great. Dude, okay, so have you seen the lineup for this finals? Tom, you've seen it, right? Oh, no, absolutely. It's easily the best players in NA. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta say, like, they're absolutely insane. The, the lineup that we currently have for this set of finals is some of the best talent in NA at the moment. They had to go through 168 players to get narrowed down to just one lobby of 18. So, before we get into these first games of the night, remember, it is just a five game set, and then that's gonna be the end of the ERCL solo finals. In this lobby, we're gonna be having Averse, Mia's Roy TV, Sleeping Lion, Superior One. Wombo, Prismaticism, 50 DKP, 50 DKP minus, aka Gobu, uh, Kyoya, Goof, Nazimi, Aisu, Water Fudge, Magnus Ape, Aethers, Ghost Electricity, EC Yoon, as well as Kesher and Shuvi Senpai. Again, these players had to go through the best of the best to get here. I gotta say, like, Throughout the, the entire event, we had 168 players get narrowed down to just three lobbies, which then got narrowed down to just one. The fact that these players have made it this far shows that they are of another level of caliber compared to everybody else in the region, because it was a, it was just insane. The amount of competition, the amount of like crazy matchups they had to face, like it's insane. What do you think about all of this? Oh no, absolutely. And one thing I would love to point out is that this is, what you're saying is a very healthy metagame. This is a very diverse roster of characters. You are not really seeing too many characters repeating here. You may see maybe two Nadines, which is a very odd character to even seeing. We're seeing Hedgens, we're seeing uh, Tanfa Yun made a very surprising, strong appearance in the form of Prismaticism over in our Group A last week. We're seeing a ton, a ton of interesting characters and play styles really shining today. And we saw a shot last week uh, in the in the solo qualifiers. I'm really, really excited to see what these guys are going to pull out. And I got to say, one of the most exciting things to me is that, like you said, yeah, the diversity is there, but also these players have pocket picks. Like almost every single character or player here has either at one point mained like several other characters or has shown us multiple characters in this tournament already. Like Magnus Ape is a person who originally was very well known for playing Magnus, but he's been playing Shukai lately and he's also very good at Magnus. He's been practicing it a lot lately too. And I'm curious if we're going to have some of these players bringing out multiple picks within these finals. Um, another thing is we have EC Yoon playing Shoichi, which is not a character we see a whole lot of in NA. And I know you're a big fan of Shoichi, uh, right? I am so, the biggest fan. I am a, a simp for that, man. So so what do you think about EC Yoon playing Shoichi? Like, do you think he has a good shot in this lobby? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been watching him like broadcast his games a little bit, and I've been seeing him run into a lot of these players you've been seeing, you're gonna be seeing in the tournament today. And he's been holding his own incredibly well. He has a new route lined up specifically to deal with the Hedgens. Normally, when it comes to that matchup, Hedgens do outpace you. But now with this route, he does outpace the Hedgens, and that is generally the biggest scare factor of uh, Shoichi. Dying in force very early on to the game is something that could just absolutely destroy your run. That's not what you're going to want at all. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see how he's going to end up performing, but I got hopes for him, and I really do. And he might he made it here for a reason. Honestly, one more thing. Like, you just mentioned all those Hedgens. We have two I, i'm trying to think there's more i think there's only two of some of the most prolific hedgens in the region we have both averse and ghost electricity who are in my opinion like the, the standout hedgen players from the region uh do you think they're gonna end up competing for the same resources too much especially since isun is also running shoichi gonna be meeting them in forest or do you think maybe they've brought some special sort of routing where they can avoid having to deal with each other in forest where they sort of have to cannibalize each other's items or maybe even avoid finding isun all together what do you think about that well, one thing I do know is that after we saw the qualifiers happen, Averse ended up playing on ladder and actually died to ECU in a ton. So the point where he got kind of scared, he said he was going to try and 
plan out some routing. I did catch a verse a little bit off stream. I don't know if he was doing anything special, but I feel like he was practicing something. He's definitely got something up his sleeve. I don't think we're going to be seeing the same routes happen over and over, especially if he knows it's very unfavorable for him in a normal game state. And I think that's going to be a thing for Ghost Electricity too. You know, I'm sure these guys saw their brackets. They spectated the other groups and they're very well aware that it's going to be very, very scary for them to end up in four, especially if they're both on the same route. They're going to be heavy contesting each other's resources. And at at that point, you're gonna have two half built hedges versus a full built Choichi, and it's just not going to end well. Also, like, I was just thinking about it. We also do have Aisu who's playing the here. I know that he goes the Ruthenium route, which sort of has some overlap with these hedging routes. They both tend to go through Alley, they both tend to go through Avenue. So I'm curious if that's gonna end up being uh, something between them. Also, I wanna highlight Miyazroy, uh, Nazimi, and Averse, I believe, are the only players who so far have managed to cross that threshold into Titan so far from the NA region because NA region still like like our rank system was a little bit underused for a while and now people are just sort of getting up into those upper ranks so we have the three highest ranked players from the region all represented within this set of finals players these are three players you're going to want to be paying attention to in these finals because they have been very consistent on ladder and they're just sort of like they are they are very strong uh killers in these lobbies they're always like popping off with a ton of kills very consistent if you saw Nazimi's like match history on the ladder i'm pretty sure he had like 11 wins out of 20 games on ladder within the last few days on his grind to titan so this is an emma player you're gonna want to be keeping your eyes on he's also got some spicy stuff in his itemization because i did see like maybe some radars floating around even though he was playing an amp build or something we've been seeing a little bit more in uh, other regions as well but in any case guys this lobby is absolutely stacked is there anyone that maybe we're sleeping on though not to you I know have you, a I think you just covered them right there. away my yeah. personal sleeper pick was nazimi nazimi oh, really was so? gonna be the guy oh absolutely man every time i run into him i'm like i don't understand i i feel like you're always so strong he's always built right on time he's never behind and then you just plays the fights so so well no matter what the matchup is he's an absolute powerhouse of an emma he really showcases all the powers in emma's case and he's been uh like you mentioned the radar tech is been popping up a little very recently the last couple days on emma I've been seeing a bit on the soul ladder it is very spicy but one player here in particular which i was very happy to catch their groups at the end of the last bracket is 50 dkp minus which is aka gobu he absolutely popped off and was demolishing his group and gobu is a very big momentum player if he's able to get his stride early on into these games you're gonna see him absolutely roll through the lobbies absolutely. but subsequently if he does get behind we do see him to fall he ends up questioning his decisions very much so eh? so hopefully we get to see a strong performance from everybody today i'm super super excited to see these games rolling and looks like we're getting into game one so so we're currently going to be loading into game one in just a moment so we're not wasting any time getting into this action, but before we get started, there's one more player I want to mention. This is probably one of the, the, the coolest storylines within this entire tournament. We do have sort of a, a uh, Cinderella story here as uh, Shuvi Senpai. Not a player a lot of people probably know about, and that's because I'm pretty sure before the tournament they were silver, and they have managed through like pure sheer of will to make it into this absolutely insanely stacked finals. This is a player that is sort of trying their heart out and if you want to root for an underdog yeah give your give your support to shubi senpai because they could really use it in this stacked set of finals also one more player who is sort of slept on that i feel like people should maybe you know put some eyes on is sleeping lion uh sleeping lion is probably one of at least the top two um best sylvias in the region they've been doing insanely good work on sylvia and also sylvia has been seeing a lot of success globally uh, after all those changes people thought it was gonna be a nerf it ended up being kind of a buff so i'm excited to see what uh, sleeping lion is gonna bring in this tournament so there's going to be potentially some strange picks coming out of these players we might have a few surprise swap ups i don't want to spoil them because i want you guys to see them the same time we do but man I'm excited to see what strange and unique tactics these players have brought because I'm sure these people have been doing their homework. I know all these players have been like taking notes of the routes of the people they're playing with as well as like, you know, having pocket picks, pocket routes, things like that. If you're going into a set of finals like this, like it, there's a lot of preparation that goes in, right? 
Oh, absolutely. You're going to be practicing your route over and over and over. And of course, you know, when you get to the highest echelon of ladder, you're going to be dealing with the same people. You're going to be dealing with, well, people thing in this bracket in particular, you're going to learn their routes very well. You have, you know, uh, resources like DACGG, where you're able to like really scout out players. You're able to re uh, look at the VOD from the ERCL qualifiers, and you're able to scout out like information like that. One thing I do want to point out, though, is a very interesting character. Uh, do, do you know what I'm talking about? We're looking at a Lennox. Yes, sir. So we have Water Fudge pivoting over to Lennox. I believe Water Fudge, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure Water Fudge was on uh, Shukai all throughout the qualifiers, right? Or was he playing, I'm pretty sure he was on Shukai, right? No, I believe he was on Shukai, yeah. So it's curious seeing him switching over to Lennox, which is not a character I exactly know him for. It's also not a character who has been particularly popular in solo lately. So I'm really excited to see this pick. I, I'm I'm so excited for this pick, actually. It's so cool. Maybe there's yeah, like it's a really specific strategy. And I don't want to spoil it because it's going to be really cute when we get there. He is not on a standard route. I ran into it earlier today and it caught me off guard big time. So I'm, I'm very, very excited to see what he's going to do. Also, as his name does stand true, we are seeing Magnus safe on the Magnus. We are not actually seeing him putting out the Jukai just yet. He seems to have been practicing that quite a bit on ladder as well. And well, it looks like he seems to be quite confident on it. Yeah, so uh, actually, I'm curious, what do you think about this Magnus pick? I can actually give you a little bit of insight into this route because Magnus Ape and I have been talking a lot lately about Magnus. Like, he and I are probably the only two people who have been playing Magnus, like, really seriously on ladder lately in NA. Uh, and so the route here is the Factory Chapel Forest, um, what's it called? Sleep, or, or, or Spy Umbrella build, right? So it's the same thing as that that one Shoichi build that we've been seeing. You're going to see ECU playing it right now where you get the Mount Slicer going Factory Chapel Forest. But here's the thing, in order to avoid finding ECU in here, in order to avoid all the hedgens over in forest in the third zone, he's actually playing in reverse. He's starting in forest, moving to chapel, and then going factory afterwards. It's a very safe way of getting all the items that you need for this build, and honestly, it's a very smart adaptation. Yeah, looking like it's going to work out quite well for him because right now we're looking at the top side of the map. We are seeing Nazimi and ECU in force and we're seeing four people grouping up at beach. One thing to know here is we were talking about it earlier. We were mentioning how the Shoichi was going to more, more likely run into the two Hedgens. But as of right now, it's not happening. And looks like, ooh, no, DKB <laughs> minus was going to go in on group there. He was like, okay, this is going to take way too long. It's a Kiara. Kiara is very infamous for being able to just run away if they're able to hit one ability. He rather just start getting, getting his own stacks rolling. Yeah, it's very important to remember that Gobu does not have shoes at the moment. And of course, like you just mentioned, Goof, he does have the steel knee pads because he starts hospital and goes cemetery afterwards. So it is way hard for uh, Gobu on Ballista there to actually catch that kill. Kesher dealing a ton of damage to Sleeping Line with just one fully charged Q after eating three times. That is going to be a lot of pressure on the Sleeping Line. He's going to be forced to disengage from that fight with Nazimi in a large engagement against Averse and Isiyun. Yeah, looks like he's going to blow the ultimate there to try and uh, pick up Nazim, but Nazimi did was able to get the hat hop, uh, hat hop over the wall, and he will be A-OK. -okay. We're seeing Keshir, and I believe Aetheris trying to contest some wolves here. Night 1 will be dropping, so that means Tree of Life and Hotel will spawn right now. Oh no, we're looking at Averse, and Nazimi going in for the 1v1 here. The beautiful Polymorph is going to stop the re-engage from Averse Z, but no, that's going to spell the first death of the first game of the ERCL Solos Finals. Nazimi will go down to Averse. Two of our top players, top seeded players going into this tournament. And Nazemi will drop first. My gosh, what a big kill for Reverse. That's going to be the momentum that he absolutely needed to start accelerating himself here in the ERCL finals. New Prismas is a, a little bit close to Sigma Line. Sigma Line is going for those bear kills over here on Beach. One thing I'm noticing is that these zones over here, Beach Hotel and Archery, are very contested here in the beginning of the game. And you're seeing exactly why. I don't want to just go back to the Magnus pick because I'm biased, but because why he is so safe over here getting all of his items together. No one is in the inside of the map at the moment. Yeah, this is a very common tactic you will see in Souls quite a bit because the top side of the map is very scary. A lot of people do power spike up here and we're seeing that happening right now between Kesher and Shuvi. A lot of people go to uh, tend to lean towards the top side of the map at two forces and you know just try and pick off those early engagements you see things like the tree of life spawning and now with a new introduction of a mechanic we have the meteorite spawns as well which could be in the top side of the map as well so top side of the map generally seems to be the place to be there's also a lot of animals up there you're gonna see a lot of wolves a lot of bears and you know those animals will drop a good amount of random resources that could just completely break your game plan open 
Yeah, absolutely. Also, one more thing I want to point out here is that we do kind of have to deal with the fact that Forest and Uptown are both closing first, which are very like normally we're seeing Forest open in the late game. So that is messing up a lot of these uh, sort of pathways in the mid game. Also, 50 TKP minus Gobu taking out Aethers, our cannibalistic uh, nature of these two Nadine players trying to run the same sort of path thing going for those early animal kills. And just like that, Aethers will be the second one to fall here as Gobu. He's starting his momentum early. Yeah, we're seeing Gobu having... I've, I always find this this type of Nadine style very, very cute. You notice that his build isn't really items that he does route for. It is all items that you will get off Wolves. We are seeing him with the Sunset Armor, we're seeing him with a Quiver, and we are seeing him with the Mithril Shield, all just building off basic opponents you can find in neighboring areas, and then just hope and playing off of whatever you do get off of those early Wolves. And from there, he'll just try to get those hunts, try to get those kills, and transition as soon as possible. A very effective strategy for Nadine, and it really does solidify herself as like the feast or famine character that everyone's come to know her as. Yeah, absolutely. One more thing I kind of wanted to point out there was that Gobu on that ballista as a weapon that is not considered extremely powerful in, you know, sort of in the global scale of things. But Gobu has been finding a ton of success on that lately, Swipe, like completely wiping his uh, semifinal group clean with that with that uh, ballista play over there last weekend. And now he's showing us exactly why he is known so well for that ballista pick on Nadine. Magnus Ape, getting the first meteor that dropped over here in Factory. Factory is the perfect location for that to drop for Magnus to be able to get it because that is right along his route. So he's already up on that uh, that Cabana nice and early. Now we have Kesher and Gobu over here in Alley trying to contest the same bear. But Gobu, man, Gobu is so powerful at the moment. Those auto attacks just absolutely chunking that bear. Yeah, he is super, super strong right now. Pretty much getting his entire build just from hunting everything down. And we are going to see him just for the rest of the game, pretty much just path for those animals. Which, while of course accelerating his own strength, is going to be denying everybody else off of resources from the map. I'm sure he's keeping count of, you know, the respawn timers for those bears and wolves. So he knows when to exactly be back for those animals. And right now, we, this game is kind of... And not to really much surprise, we do know all these players are very, very good, but the game has slowed down a lot. There has been a no action really on the map. We only have two deaths by day two. This is quite the slow lobby in comparison to what we saw last week in the in the qualifying matches. Why, why do you think so? Yeah, the, the semifinals were way more aggressive. We had, ooh, we have someone CPing in right next to ECU, and he's going for the jump on him. But of all people to jump out, it is Prismaticism, who is playing Tonfa Hyun. Generally a very tanky build, but right now with just the uh, the Tindalos ban and the unfinished crown, he's looking a little squishy on the mo at the moment on that Hyunwoo. We also have Wombo in a fight against uh, Ghost Electricity, and it looks like Shubi sent by fighting 50 DKP minus over here in archery range. And these players may be going down at any moment. ECU is starting to get uh, probably a big engagement over there in Pond as well. Shubi Senpai ulting to get away, and that will not be a kill translated over to Gobu. And it'll oh be very painful for Shubi Senpai for the next three minutes. That's because because they ulted away and didn't actually hit anything, it will put uh, Dylan's ultimate on a three minute cooldown. Ghost Electricity on quite the interesting build here. Looks like to uh, a build to avoid force altogether. Ooh, we're seeing quite the convergence in seven turns. We're seeing Kyoya, Wombo, Mizroy, and Ghost Electricity just kind of walking around here. Nobody really wants to take a fight because I'm sure they're all very well, very well aware that you know they have friends in neighboring areas. You yeah. take one fight, the third person comes in, and that is that's gonna be your end. Yeah, it is absolutely congested over there, especially since a lot of people are still alive. We only had two falls so far. Everyone with their very safe play in general. Wombo in the red, trying to get gate kept by Kesher. Looks like he will be getting the tree in the end. He doesn't have his shoes done, so this is probably just to make those glacial shoes since he has nothing finished at the moment. Wait a second, Wombo. That is a very interesting choice to go over to the research center to try to get back into the zone with only nine seconds left. Can they even make it? Wait, is this is this a mistake? I've Wombo. I've never three, seen anyone try for two, he's dead. One Wombo's just out of the game. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh Wombo. That was an interesting play. Honestly, I, I respect it though. That was a really good heads up play. If you thought you were gonna get gate kept on the entrance to cemetery because you knew there were people over there, maybe just making the call to uh, go to the research center and try and make it in. He was only about a second off. That's a calculation that's really hard to make in the moment. Wombo going down to the zone and I, that that's a, I don't even know how to make heads or tails of that. That's being engaged yeah. on by ECU. Yeah, we're seeing ECU drop down the ultimate, trying to get the Q2 reset. 
try and just catch up for some and One thing to know about Isun's build here is that he's in fast with the new Tachyon Brace, White Crane Fan, and Mount Slicer. He has a ton of extra moves. We're missing Ghost Electricity coming in for the third party, but no, Isun will secure that kill for himself. But oh no, Ghost Electricity dropping down the ultimate, oh, and no. now he is stuck between a rock no, and a hard no, place. No, the no. charms just coming down, and Isun will drop, and now it's the dance of the Hedgens. They are just having their little ceremony going on here over at Pond. And man, that is such an unfortunate way to go down. I'm sure he had no idea what was about to happen to him, but at least he died in a visually stunning fashion. DC Yoon was caught between those two, like, saw blades, practically, of Hedge and Ult. The worst possible place you would ever want to be in general. Unfortunate. EC Yoon, our only Shoichi player, will be going down in, uh, in... I'm sorry, like, I guess the fifth person to fall here over in the first round. Remember, there are five rounds still, so even if you have a poor performance here in the first round, you still have plenty of time to bring it back, and maybe it gives you more time to maybe bring out some alternate strategies as well. Well, we are seeing Man, Superior 1. this is one. so crazy. We are looking at Night 2. We're just looking at Day 3. There are 13 people alive. What? There is no aggression in this map at all. Miseroy getting the Wickland. Oh, that is going to spell every resource he wants. He took the Wickland buff and everything off her body. He is going to be now be... Yeah, he already has a Fagarash, but he is going to now be on oh the Chinese Lord. Opera Mask. And yeah. another Force Core 2 boot and potentially a mithril or maybe telephoto cameras we don't really know what that last resource could be that is completely random but he is looking very very scary if you guys have not seen a fully transitioned catty you you don't know pain that catty will run at you at lightning speed and there is nothing you can do about it and he is practically halfway there yeah we've been seeing Mia's right dominating on the ladder lately using exactly the same strategy. Go for Wick, make sure you get Wick. Now you have the Wick buff, you have all those transition pieces. Musroy is incredibly powerful at the moment, and everyone is honestly probably just trying to get away from him because you know how powerful that Cathy can be when they uh, get those fully upgraded items and that Wick buff. We are on day three, almost day four. Only five people have fallen. We have 13 players still alive. This is the most passive and safe uh, like state of play I have ever seen out of these NA players and I gotta say I kind of respect it I think these players are probably just saying like you know we're in a tournament setting we cannot be taking these risks and forcing ourselves into fights that we do not want to take because we're just trying to get that uh that safe play Okay, because you know all these players, if you overextend against them, if you have a bad engagement, you're going to get capitalized on. There's going to be someone nearby to third party. You're going to have maybe like a fight that you underestimate. Like we have Boop right here going in on Isusama as he's using the bush to his advantage to try and get that extra safety uh, to not get picked off by someone else who might be trying to third party. They can't really see him quite as well. And Isu on this build, making him very tanky with three max HP items, but still dealing a ton of damage with that Ruthenium Marble. Yeah, he is. Aisu is on such a safe, safe character. He really, at this point, all he, he knows he can't kill Goof unless Goof were to just all in him for whatever reason. But one thing he can do is just farm up a ton of mastery off of him. And that's really all we're seeing from these players. We're just seeing a lot of poke going in back and forth. Mag is safe, throwing down his Q, just getting down a little poke. Kyoya is going to be here, probably going to throw out some poke too. All you can really do is get some free mastery off of them because you're never going to really be able to get that all in engage because again like you mentioned earlier the third parties is always so prevalent you know these players have a ton of vision they're going to be grabbing consoles they are trying to be as safe as possible they are playing characters with incredibly safe too but no speaking of engagement we're looking magnusave going out kyoya here magnusave does have the bike from hell still up and we are going to see a motorcycle race going down gonna do an absolute ton of damage there by reactivation but kyoya still does have fuel does drop the wall slow Ooh, I don't know. We're seeing Ice Down from the backside, and it looks like to be a hedge on this right. This school is absolutely congested right now. We're seeing five people here. Everybody just converging on the noise from earlier. And oh no, we're seeing these right going out. Water Punch dropping down the beautiful ultimate. Water Punch dropping incredibly low, and he will drop as the sixth person in this game. Yeah, we're seeing exactly how powerful Musroy is right now with all of those incredibly rare items that he got off of the Wick. Uh, sorry, off of Wick's body after that kill. Also with that Wick buff, we are seeing Shubi's in fight in a lot of trouble as Kesher is grabbing a lot of damage and getting that re-slow with the uh, the really strong Q reactivations. Also with that ultimate to try and keep Shubi's in fight in place and give him no chance to uh, get away before the cooldowns are back down for Kesher with the ultimate out plus a couple of Qs. Shubi Senpai's gonna get away here. The question is, where is Shubi Senpai gonna go though? Because I don't see it being very realistic that you can actually get away from this heart player who has so much mobility. Also, those glacial shoes. And the out of combat movement speed from the Rocker Jacket giving you a ton of out of combat movement speed, making your chase potential very potent. 
Yeah, this is looking like a very slow demise for Shibi Senpai here. With really no chance to turn it on unless we're going to see um, the hard player here just absolutely mess it up. But I, I just don't see it happening. With so much movement speed and agency to catch his name right now, it is only a matter of time before Shibi drops here. And it doesn't oh look like there's anybody in the area. Shibi has got some moves, though. Good He's been dodging charms, been dodging cues. So maybe there might be a potential for a turn here. Ooh, Shibi trying to put down some aggression, but it's not able to weave in those auto attacks. Ooh, there we go. We're seeing those auto attacks come down and just absolutely chug Keshir down to a quarter of HP here. Trying to get the ring it, but oh. Shubi does have a board of dance around. Wait, uh, Kesha going in. Ooh, but a beautiful charm will kill Shubi. Yeah, I was actually very curious if that was going to come down to some sort of a timer play because there's only 13 seconds left before that zone ended up closing. And honestly, Shubi Senpai, that was a rough situation to be in. But with beautiful jukes, that almost turned into a favorable fight. Like, that was almost the most insane turnaround I'd ever seen in my life. Shubi Senpai, good try. And also, Kesha, a good kill as well. I haven't seen Gobo yeah, in the range this entire game. I don't know about you, but every time I check, he's at 63, 64, 65 farm now. Wow, what is that? What is, his mastery is insane at 16. There's like every other player's at like 12 or 11, 9, 10. He's at 16. He's farming, he's yeah, farming insanely well right now. Uh, we mentioned it earlier, he timed everything on the map. He is going to be there the moment it respawns. And of course, with the Dean's kit, is very clear that she's going to be able to kill animals at the moment they, 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 they respawn. Like, Nadine is so efficient at farming animals for even such a long range. No one's ever going to be able to contest Nadine. And if you play this game for any amount of time, you will know if Nadine's in the zone, it's their zone now. You yeah. have to respect that. Nadine will kill you. Yeah, Nadine tends to just control zones, uh, grabbing console, you know, logging those animal timers. It's a very efficient way of playing Nadine, and honestly, it pays off in a huge way because you get a lot of those those extra wild hunt stacks, and that is what sort of scales up your damage without having to actually build a lot of offensive items. Okay, we're seeing Mews right over here clearing up some chickens before being forced to funnel into Avenue as both School and RG are about to close. There's just 43 seconds left. All these players opting to go in one way or the other. Gobu checking the bush, and now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players all here contesting Avenue. That's what happens when you have 11. Wait, no, it's not nine. It's eight. That's why we have 11 people still alive. Man, how is there still 11 people still alive as we are about to go into night four in uh, this first round of the ERCL? And we, we mentioned earlier, it's just everyone's playing so, so passive. And you're noticing a trend of pretty much every character here. They all have very, very safe tools inherently built into their kit. Maybe outside of the, the, the Nadine player, but everyone else is just has tools in their kit to be incredibly safe. They have a ton of agency. They know not to pick fights. And if they do, they're just going to take those small trades and never really push their limits. Like right now, we're seeing Ghost Electricity take a small trade with Kyoya, but... I'm oh, no, sorry, with... Yeah, no, with Kyoya. And it's just not really much has happened there. Magnus Safe getting some nice damage down to Sweeping Lion, but again, Sylvie's just such a safe character. It is going to be really, really hard to finish you off here. Ooh, but speaking of finishing you off, Superior is dropping incredibly low, and a beautiful Arrow Rain is going to drop Superior here. A verse on a killing speed with the beautiful UI update. I'm a big fan of it. Ooh, Mia's right looking for blood over here, getting a catch on the Ghost Electricity, but the fear will land, and Mia's right will get pushed off. Problem is, though, Ghost Electricity is about to run into Aisusama, who's about to run into Magnus Ape. It is turning into a quick little fiesta over here before anyone is really aware of it. Unfortunately, Magnus Ape trying to find the angle, but just get on this wide open bridge. Oh, but he is getting close to a wall. This could be a stun for Magnus Ape pretty soon. The boar, though, accepting that uh, broken bullet there from Magnus will not turn into anything too soon. Mia's right. Getting connected. Yeah, we are. Find that broken bullet. Yeah, we are seeing Mizu where it does have a ton of lifesteal in their kit. But one thing Magnus is very effective at, and especially on this build, is just absolutely bursting you with zero chance. If, Ma if Magnus was able to uh, line up with that E with a bat skill and a Q, there's a good chance that Mizu would drop before even having the chance to react at all. Ooh, two spells do connect on to Gobu as he is trying to get into the zone. There are still so many players over here in these yellow zones. Mia's right, going in for the assassination on Averse. Ooh, the suture threat does not land, and Averse is able to sort of push him back, but there is a squirrel trap there set up by Gobu. Now Mia's right is in a tough spot. Or sorry, Averse is in a tough spot. Now Goop is here ready to third party as well. Ooh, it's gonna be tough for these players to maybe get through this fight unscathed, especially since there are still so many people, eight players still alive. We have uh, Magnus Ape taking down, uh, I believe it was Sleeping Lion over there on the side of the map. 
Yeah, right now we're looking at two players, two extra players did just drop here, bringing us up into our top eight situation, and we are looking at eight players with final zone closing in two minutes. We are going to see players be absolutely insanely safe here. Means we're trying to push some aggression onto the hedge and knowing very well this is a very, very favorable matchup for him for himself here but no he's getting absolutely drunk goes like tristany putting out a lot of damage here but he is ticking with the bleed he's dropping incredibly low down to three health there for a moment and he is just barely walking away but averse trying to come in here with a third party goes like tristany going back over to wall and means will secure the kill averse knowing that means doesn't have any more resources to himself right now he's gonna get an absolute gorgeous fear and ultimate down and here comes goof going in for the third party and we're gonna see means where dro dropping two goofs leaving us with six players left Ooh, we also have Gobu coming in for the, like, sixth party at this point. I'm not even sure at this point how many parties you've seen here. But yeah, the whole entire time that Mia's was fighting Ghost Electricity and, like, whoever else was all fighting over here, we did have Goof sitting in this bush, just playing it very safe, very passive, just trying to third party at the precise correct moment. And we have Goof checking to see a verse over there as a verse is getting to clean up all of these bodies, taking whatever traps that he wants off of them. We're down to just six players, and Gobu is already ready to set up here at the console. For the players who are just tuning in who do not understand how the final zone works currently, uh, that final square you saw over by the console in the center of the map will be where the zone is restricted to once the timer reaches zero. Now, Goof is in a very bad spot here as Averse is putting a ton of pressure onto him. He's forced into the back corner with pretty much nowhere to run. Averse, he throws down the arrow rain. Will he be able to finish this off? Oh. The E into the ultimate. A couple of omens are landing, but he's not quite at the right spacing to make them all land. A Q lands. Another Q and Goof will end up going down. Yeah, look at that versus putting an absolute ton of pressure here. We're seeing trying to see Kesher trying to go in, but Ooh. it may have been poor time from Kesher's part because those omens are still ticking. You probably assume that Averse probably had no abilities back up to his name, but we are very, very late into the game. Averse does have to pull a reduction. We're seeing Kesher dropping down the ultimate. Zone did close. All these players outside the final zone right now are going to be taking red timer here. If that timer does the mission zero, we're going to see what happened earlier. Back in the research center, they will explode. So right now, five players left. We're seeing a ton of pressure being thrown onto Aisu Sama here. Aisu will drop Kesher, dropping incredibly low. We're seeing a verse and Gobu just taking short skirmishes here. We're seeing Kesher having to get out of zone here. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, Aisu is the first to fall of these five. Uh, Kesher is forced to sit in the zone as a verse was pretty much forced out as well early on. Magnus Ape sort of controlling the bottom side of the square. No one is really trying to put a ton of pressure on him. A verse goes in with the full combo with the ultimate and the E, but now a verse is incredibly close. Kesher gets the kill. That's a few more seconds on the timer for Kesher, so he has more room to work with. But Gobu is doing so much damage. Kesher dropping incredibly low with seven seconds left. He has to walk back in. He cannot rest out in the zone, but Magnus Ape is still almost full HP and he has a ton of timer as well. Can he clean up Kesher before Gobu comes back in? Gobu sitting with just seven seconds left. Left. Yeah, we look like Gobu's gonna have to come back in any moment now. Has four seconds to his timer. Magnus Ape, plenty of timer. He can wait this out. He has 20 seconds left to his timer. We're seeing Kesher and Gobu are gonna have to try to take a little bit of a poke war here. Kesher can engage that bush with all the scroll traps. Gobu getting his ultimate back. Beautiful dodge and charm. We're seeing Magnus Ape coming back in with the bike. W dropping down. We're seeing Gobu still does have his ultimate ticking. He's gonna have a ton of consistent damage. The cross is dropping. And Magnus Ape will drop game one. Goes to Gobu. Gobu with an insane snipe there with the crossbow skill, knocking him into the zone or knocking him into the with the stun. Gobu, absolutely beautiful play there. I cannot believe it. I, I'm losing it, dude. That was an insane conclusion. I thought Magnus Ape had that for sure, but it turned out to be Gobu who ended up clutching it. I can't believe it. I, I I'm I'm speechless. Man. Okay, well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never, you never know what an Indian could do. All of those stacks, if we've mentioned earlier, all those hunts from early on to the game, that counts up into ultimate damage. And my God, did it absolutely chunk every single time a wolf came out. And then just a beautiful crossbow, crossbow skill placement, absolutely destroying Magnus Safe, securing Gobu his first game win here in the USL Solos Finals. Five kills, mastery 20 to his name. Beautiful play from Gobu. Gobu played that so well. Yeah, level 20. He, or sorry, level 20 on the mastery. Level 20 on his character as well. And 73 farm and five kills. Gobu played that just completely perfectly. He had that, that, that one bush completely just trapped up with a bunch of squirrel traps. So it was really hard for Magnus to get on top of him with that safety net to fall back to. Like it was just immaculate play from 50 TKP minus, aka Gobu.
beautiful play beautiful play I'm, I'm actually speechless how like well he played that i also want to give a huge shout out to magnus ape who was in my opinion despite being only at one kill second place i felt like he was dictating the pace of that final square more than anyone else actually he felt like that the like arbiter of all of these decisions that were being made by every other player i, I don't know dude I, that whole final square i could spend hours dissecting it that was beautiful play from every single person there no, absolutely. Magnus Ape played that beautifully and definitely not on a build really known for playing in the final zone. He's on the very glass cannon build. Very easy to just make one misstep and die, but he was navigating that final zone beautifully dictating the fight, making sure that he took off a ton of pressure from himself, putting that pressure onto everyone else, and just waiting for the right moment to come in and just sink his teeth in. Sadly, he wasn't able to pick up a ton of kills himself, only with the one, but my god, I, I mean, did you expect a Magnus to come out here today and perform this well? Because I sure didn't. I, okay, to a degree, yes, because I know Magnus Ape is such a good player. He is very consistent. He's almost always in like that top five sort of situation. And I know that his tournament play is is some of the best in the entire region. I've always seen him just play perfectly. Like he has just that game sense when 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 like pride and money is on the line. He has that beautiful game sense to sort of get in there, always make it to the final square and sort of just mind control everyone into not attacking him and totally dictating the pace of everything. And yeah, that's exactly what he did, dude. That Magnus play was so good. Uh, like there were so many points where he could have gotten a kill on the bike, just like landed a second too late. And that's just, that's just sort of how it is sometimes. There's everybody playing so well. But before we get into this next game, we do have the scores ready. So let's move on over to that. Uh, currently in first place, we have 50 DKP minus, AKA Gobu with 31 whole points. In second place, we have a verse, ah, I'm actually kind of surprised. I know Averse had a bunch of kills there in that uh, in that lobby, but he ended up in like fourth or something on placement behind uh, Kesher and Magnus Ape, but he ended up with 20 points second place. Do you want to run us through the rest of them, Tom? Yeah, we're saying third place, we're saying Kesher on the Ampart with 16 points. He did make it to the final circle, played it very, very passively, and was able to pick up the kill on the Averse at the very end there. Fourth place, which we just mentioned, is Magnus Ape on Magnus. And fifth place, we're seeing Mizroy. And despite getting the wick line and all of those components so early on to the game, wasn't really able to transition into a much bigger lead. He did end up dropping in the hospital with the absolutely ridiculous final circle of eight people. Such a hard situation to play for anybody there. But he's still fifth place with 11 points. And in sixth place, we do have Goof on that Kiara. Able to uh, just get that, la that one kill at the very end of the game. Same situation on Mizroy in the hospital corner final circle. And... Well, so far, it's looking pretty close. Top two right now, having a very big lead versus the rest. But, of course, guys, that was only game one. We have four more games to go for tonight. And if you guys want to see more sick solos action, well, stick around. You're going to be seeing some really soon. Yeah, absolutely. Like, man... I I can't get over it, dude. That first game was so sick. We had so many, like, incredible storylines throughout that entire match. And I just am so excited for the four remaining games of the finals of the ERCL. But before we get into this uh, next match, I kind of want to talk about character picks. I feel like we're going to see a few shifts. I feel like if something didn't work for these players in the first game, I have a feeling some character is going to be swapped around because I, I'm not saying you need to swap if you didn't have a, a good first game, because honestly, sometimes you just have a bad game. It doesn't mean you necessarily need to switch, but I have a feeling that these players are prepared quite a lot when it comes to character selection, when it comes to play styles, you know, builds, routes, whatever. So I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw maybe some switches and um, yeah, well, no spoiler, but I, I have a feeling we will be for sure <laughs> seeing some switches on these character picks maybe some spicy stuff coming up in uh this lobby i have to say there are a few higher tier characters that i feel have been a little bit underrepresented in this group but then again we are just sort of seeing these players playing the characters that they're most comfortable on like magnus ape on magnets no one saw that coming i i'm shocked we didn't see a shukai out of him because he played that all throughout the semifinals. yeah absolutely i think one thing players don't want to admit right now is that uh the meta is in a pretty healthy spot. And we have Honestly, a, yeah. you can pretty much pick any character right now and bring them into a top level. It really is up to the pilot at the end of the day. It is that consistency. The game is really, really consistent in pretty much every mode. It's really in a fantastic spot. And we have this thing. I mean, guys, we just saw last game, a character that what people regard as the lowest tier character for solos, Lennox, being whipped out game one. And while not having the strongest performance, well, 
hey, you never know. We got four more games to go to see the Atlantox dominate. We know Waterfrontage does have a very unique strategy coming up there, but we did see one interesting swap coming out from character picks. Yeah, we. I, I don't. I don't want to spoil it quite yet, but it was a character that we did not see in the first game. Then again, the players who are in this lobby are not really necessarily known for playing that character, except for one who has been practicing it quite a lot lately. And of course, that is the player who did end up switching. But I, I, I want to talk about it, but we can't yet because we're still in the loading screen. Um, but for now, I do want to highlight that our Hedgen players ended up not dying to ECU. And I know that sounds like I, I really ironic because ECU ended up dying to the Hedgen players. But um, uh, yeah, like honestly, the thing that surprised me the most is that these players adapted very well on their routing. No one really had that sort of hard counter moment where they ran into something that really messed them up in that uh, in that early game. So we have the lobby loaded. Tom, what is the surprise pick? Yes. All right, so one of the veteran players of Eternal Return is Aetherus, and he is going to be on the Adriana. A character, when on release, was regarded as probably the worst character in the entire game, has been since then gotten a ton of love over the last few patches, and is probably, in my opinion, one of the strongest characters in the game, but also one of the most difficult. And this is probably, this is easily one of the best players to put a, such a hard character on. Aetherus is an just such a such a strong player overall every time i run into him every time i hear him theory craft it just he, he blows my mind he's such a smart player and i'm very very excited to see what he can do with adriana like you mentioned earlier he's been practicing an absolute ton he does have reroutings and revisions for those routes in case anything ever comes up so i'm very excited to see what he can do on this adriana pick yeah he is starting over here in alley which is not i'll be honest with you uh the adriana routes that i'm familiar with they tend to start in avenue I i'm not sure exactly what he's gonna be bringing for us Although it looks like he... Wait, wait hold on. It just snapped it's my camera. It's a Damian Marble, it looks like. Damian Marble? Wait, huh. wait That a minute. is not an item we see. Ooh. But Aether's just putting a ton of pressure on him with the Tornado being thrown out, plus the Q, a couple of Ws, nearly finishing him off there. Aether's, he TPs over to Beach and does survive, but if he's not too careful, we have Water Fudge over here with the finished Gleipnir. That could be a uh, it could be a pretty unfortunate end for Aether's if he walks the wrong direction right into that pretty well-built Lennox. Yeah, one thing, one of Lennox's strongest suits is that early game. You run into a Lennox early game and you are a character that has very little mobility, you are as good as done. And of course, well, we're seeing another character in the form of Gobu, which is another character that has incredibly, incredibly strong early game on the Ballista. And looks like we have uh, quite the interesting guitar pick. It looks like we have a Bohemian. Yeah, so, I mean, I can tell you a little bit more about Wumbo's build. Wumbo always starts on Bohemian, but then he pivots into something else afterwards. We have a Verse already with a finished Mystic J-Charm, switching over to Shuriken? Okay, Verse, I see you. You've got game plans. I'm curious what you got. 50 DKP, 50 DKP minus finding Wumbo over here, taking a ton of damage early. A Verse might be just fed this first kill. Ah, oh, Gobu, our first place player from the, the last match, does get third partied and does fall first to a Verse. Wow, ah, such that a was, sad way to go. Uh, he is. I he just I, I wanted to bad. get out. Yeah, I feel bad. Yeah, that always does so terrible. I thought Wombo was actually going to be killed there by like 50 DKP minus plus uh, a verse. I, I I for sure thought that was going to be a kill onto Wombo there, but he turned it with that huge Q. You're seeing why that Bohemian is so good. So let's talk more about the Bohemian. Bohemian. It gives you attack power. It gives you max HP. It's an early game weapon. So basically it allows you to go from pond to avenue. Finish this weapon as well as get a bunch of your amp pieces so you can eventually transition to a different amp guitar afterwards. It's just an early game like temporary weapon to hold on to until you switch to something else afterwards. That's that's what Wombo's game plan is. So you're going to be seeing this swap over to probably a uh, stairway to heaven at some point in this game. But for now, it's a Bohemian. Yeah, that was a change made uh, quite a few patches ago where you can to now craft a starter guitar and enabling builds such as that one that we're seeing coming out from Wumbo. One thing I do want to point out is, you know, as we're seeing right now, we are seeing a verse on the Shuriken Hedgen. And the reason for that is, well, again, we have another Hedgen in this lobby who is going to be contesting the route and there's only so many resources that can go around. And if you know there is a high chance that you can't get your items due oh, to a spawn or due to boxes not being too good for you it's gonna be an issue Ooh, should senpai is dropping very very low here a, a, a sort of a run back from that last game fight we have kesher fighting shubi senpai over here but this time it's in a hotel and we're also seeing it in the earlier parts of the game so maybe kesher won't necessarily be able to close out the kill as easily as he did in the last one who should be senpai going back in for the re-engage thinking that maybe kesher might be an easy target here 
if his ultimate is still up, which it is, that actually might be a fight that he could turn. We also are seeing Mia's Roy in an engagement against Water Fudge. Water Fudge already on four items, almost five. And Mia's Roy. Oh, Mia's Roy is not too uh, poorly built himself either. Yeah, Mia's Roy is practically full build here. It looks like he was just, uh, you know, just probably a glue away from being essentially full build. This is about to turn to quite attack, himself, you know? Yeah. So Water Fudge has to finish shoes. Oh. If he wants to chase this down, he might be able to actually get the catch onto him. Somewhere else in the map, we do see Prismaticism going down to Sleeping Light. Sleeping Light picking up his first kill of the round. And that's a pretty good kill. Prismaticism is a character who or is, a, is a player who plays uh, Tom Fahyun very, very well. He, he actually did extremely well in his group in the semifinals, and it wouldn't be surprising to me if he ended up doing well here in the finals as well, but he has not been finding quite the success that he had in, uh, in that semifinal period. Maybe other players have sort of figured out his strategy. Yeah, and it's also a build that does finish quite slow in comparison to the other builds here. You know, we do see builds like we saw Tom Mizwar's practically full build night one, where his does take a little bit more greedy resources to get together. This is, uh, I do like this tech here from Aetheris though. The, the sniper scope coming out, granting him a ton of vision for that nighttime, 4.5 vision to be exact. It is really something you're going to see him swap in between that and another accessory because, again, nighttime does reduce your overall vision, makes it very dangerous for you. This will give him a lot more agency to dictate those fights. Especially since right now he's not very built. He is quite weak until he gets those items online, but Adriana is a very safe character. We're seeing Superior 1 and Averse catching each other over here on the right side of the factory. But I don't think they can necessarily get on top of each other to force an engagement. Goof and Kesher. That's Kesher, yeah. Goof and Kesher maybe getting into an engagement over here on the top side of Alley, but it looks like Kesher manages to jump over the wall. That is one of the few weaknesses of, uh, what's her name, Kiara, that she can't quite follow people over the walls that effectively. Superior one, with a nice hop over into the red zone of Cemetery, will be able to get away from a verse after a verse had done so much damage so quickly. That lethal combo of like E into ultimate, dealing a ton of damage early in that fight. Wumbo, Sleeping Lion. All these players are trying to maybe uh, catch each other out, trying to get some early kills because honestly, kills are worth a lot in this scoring system. Remember, each kill is worth three points flat. Magnus say biking into the board that will reset the cooldown slightly as Aisu attempts to chase him. I don't know if Aisu can necessarily get this catch though, as he was not able to connect that Q to eventually get that extra movement speed. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that Aisu is going to be worried about. Ooh, wait. I'm out there. We are seeing Sleepy Lion and Superior. Sleepy Lion's going for a bit of a chase here. Superior on very low timing. Beautiful Wahab coming out from Sleepy Lion here. And it looks like he's just trying to get that re engage before Superior is able to jump over this wall. And just with six seconds left on his oh timer. No. Oh no, he is. Oh, oh, does get no. the polymorph off. Balumbo zooming by, picking up a free kill. Like, oh, you're at a quarter health? No, 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 no. I will not allow that. Just look at that. Man, he is so fast with the glacial shoes and hearts. E just giving them a nice little bit of a dash. It's going to be so helpful. Oh, Ghost electricity. Oh. Very squishy. Oh my goodness. Ghost electricity. You can't just, you can't just explode like that. Oh my god, Wombo showing what the burst of an amp heart can do. Water Fudge in a fight against Mia's right. Mia's right lands a lot of damage, but Water Fudge's ultimate does connect, I believe, only one of the slashes. So Mia's right is going to just opt to get away from that. You know, just reset the fight, try it again another time. But my god, Wombo getting an easy two kills out of nowhere. One just handed to him on a silver platter, and the other one, well, he just took by force as Ghost Electricity ended up getting bursted in one swift combo. If that charm lands against a like 1,380. HP Hedgen, it's not going to be pretty, as you saw. Yeah, for those who don't know anything about Ampar, I know it's not a very popular pick. The evolutions are very different from Enad. When you do evolve Heart's E ability, whenever you use the E, as it does have three dashes, you will end up charging up. You will get more amp overall. So what you saw there was two preemptive dashes. The third one coming in, the charm in the queue, just absolutely one-shot him. But now we're seeing Goof getting engaged on by Sleeping Lion. Sleeping Lion with the pistol reset skill going back on the bike. God, Beautiful combo so coming clean. down. Goof. Dropping super low, but now we're seeing coming with a third party. Sleeping line with barely any uh with barely any abilities to his name right now, but he does have the bike form back up. Isun trying to get as much damage as possible, but he's very, very tanky. Now we're seeing a third and fourth party coming in. Sleeping line and Isun both forced into the red here. Isun trying to get the teleport out. He might be able to get it. Yeah, it looks like the Sleeping Line is going like, okay, I'm gonna let you leave, but you know, I just wanna leave too. Oh no! Isun TP back in the pond and landed right on Nazimi. Oh no! Of all the places to go back to, ECU decided to go right back to where the battle was still raging between Hazimi and Mia's right. Unfortunate. 
He's seen Wolf Hall in almost the same place where he died last game. Not a tragic way to go. Man, that whole oh, fight, dude. Man. I gotta say, Sleeping Lion is looking really good right now. I don't know if you saw how clean those bike combos were, but man, he was swerving and sliding all over the place and dealing so much damage along the way. Looking fantastic at the moment. Shubi Senpai fighting against Water Fudge. Water Fudge dealing a ton of damage. Shubi Senpai is not able to find sort of the time or, oh my God, Wumbo. Are you ever not in the correct place at the correct time at every point in this game for the charm? Does miss all oh, with the silence on the Wumbo. Cancels the ultimate. Water Fudge gets the kill instead. Wumbo now forced to run away as Water Fudge is looking like a total beast right now with those finished Hermes boots. Magnus Ape is also ready to third party. Yeah, you're looking at one third party. If you try to fight right now, you're going to find a third, fourth, and fifth party. Every player in this game has incredible game sense. They know when to walk in at the right time. And right now, in this particular game, Wumbo has just been there for everything. We are seeing Roy just waiting for that wick line to spawn. Nobody actually contesting him. And Kesher dropping to Nazimi. Nazimi's going to pick up his second kill of the game. Again, uh, it's kind of unfortunate that both, both the kills for Nazimi were so fast. It was off screen. But he's an insane player. One of the first two being tied right now we're now looking aethers and wumbo taking a fight over at beach but aizusama is not too far lurking in the corner waiting for his opportunity to third party not and not far behind him as well is magnus safe also ready to third party at any moment the funny thing about these matches is that there's still 10, 10 people alive and there was a bunch of people alive in the late game last game as well the funny thing that, to me is that even though there's been fights constantly within all of these games, there's really nothing that significant happening. A lot of these players are sort of just like getting in fights, testing the waters and deciding to not fully commit because if they do fully commit, you're gonna see several people chasing you down in that situation. We're seeing Wickeline moving over into Temple as all these players are ready to sort of bodyguard her and make sure no one else is able to get that kill without their ability to third party. Sleeping Lion, Mia's Roy. We also have Nazimi not far behind and a verse on the top side of Temple as well. All these players ready to uh, make sure that well specifically that Mia's Roy is not able to get it because he has been getting it very consistently and he got it last game as well and you know how powerful he can be when he does get those items and that bust. Sleeping Lion throwing the first shot onto Wickeline but Nazimi is not far behind and ready to third party as long as Wickeline is there helping him out. Tons of damage coming out there from Wick. We are seeing the pistol reset skill coming down. The bike will come back, come back up, and Sleepy Lang will be able to get disengaged here. One fatal mistake. They're almost spelling Sleepy Lang's doom. You can never really jump into an Emma like that, especially when there is a dove preemptively placed. With that dove being down, and he does get the root swap. Well, that is gonna give you a full combo plus a cow traps, and it's gonna nearly one shot. Someone even as tanky as Sylvia. Miseroy, very, very patient right now. Will not secure the Wickland, but he will get the components for himself. We are looking at Miseroy trying to get chunked just a little bit here from Nazimi. And we know that Miseroy does not care about getting the buff. He just wants the Force Core and the VF Blood. That is going to be 100% a Fragorosh coming down and a Chinese Opera Mask. Ooh, but Nazimi potentially catching him here. He doesn't have his weapon swapped over right now, so he's on a green dagger. If he takes this fight with a with an army knife, there's no way he wins. So he's just forced to get out. He ults over the wall for the extra heal and the mobility, but Nazimi is kind of able to catch up here. Without that card one, which he normally has, he has less CDR as well and less movement speed. This might be fatal. This mistake right here, trying to make the frag rack right there in the open might spell his doom, but no, Nazimi gives up the chase instead. He's trying Such to kill a bat I like with an army knife. <laughs> Beans, bro, what are you doing? Just switch it over. Come on. He knows he's on camera. He knows he's just living in the moment. Now we're looking at Magnus Ape at a verse, taking a little fight here. And of course, Magnus is doing what he does best, just like disengaging with that bike, being incredibly, incredibly safe with it. But as of a couple patches ago, it is on a much, much higher cooldown, especially since it did not hit any animals whatsoever. So he's not going to be able to do that for quite some time now. And now we're looking at Wumbo. And Sleeping Lion taking a little bit of fight over in Forest right now. And Sleeping Lion is looking very, very weak right now. Wumbo getting some beautiful dashes down. Getting a nice place Q. We're seeing the Pistol Reset skill drop down. Sleeping Lion is going to be able to take a disengage. But wait a second. Magnus Ape is here. But he doesn't notice what's happening right next to him. But Wumbo is not done with this chase yet. He's going to go back in on Sleeping Lion. Will Sleeping Lion be able to dodge his Q? Yes, the Q does miss. Wumbo is going to have to wait here. Sleeping Lion is still ticking for some really nice food right now. And Wumbo is starting to get dropped on. No, but that Charm and Q is going to 
spell sleeping lines in. Yeah, that beautiful charm NQ. One thing I have to mention about that amp heart is that yes, it does do a lot of damage, but if you're not landing your skill shots, you're not doing damage. It's not like Enad Heart where you can miss a Q or two. It doesn't matter because you still can just auto for huge amounts of damage. Nah, -uh. if you miss that charm, if you miss that Q, you're doing like close to zero damage at that point. So congratulations, one of the good snipes there, especially that one last charm to finish off uh, uh, Sleeping Lion. That's another uh, tough competitor down. A good kill for Wombo. A lot of these players yeah, are playing absolutely. really passive. Wombo. I was just going to say, like, yeah, I noticed, like, I choose on zero kills, and I'm pretty sure he was playing just about the same sort of passive uh, gameplay in the last game as well. A lot of these players just playing for that final square. I I'm curious if the mastery, uh, if they're going to have mastery issues not being able to, like, have a lot of strength going into the, la into the last zone. Or, like, we're seeing Kyoyo, just nine mastery, compared to some of our players who've been fighting more often at 15. We have Water Fudge. Ooh. Maybe finding a verse over here. That that very large Q somehow hitting Water Fudge there. Uh, unfortunate for him. Ooh, looks like Water Fudge just wants to chase this hedge and down, but man, I, I can't really see a world where Water Fudge really does catch to a hedge in here. Too much CC in the kit, and Lanox not a character with really a gap closer. Even if they do have a ton of out of combat movement speed, and they're never truly gonna ever be out of combat here. We are looking, uh, yeah, Mizuwa does have the Fragrash Online and the Chinese Opera Mask and Mithril Armor. He is as strong as strong could be right now. And Rand, we mentioned this earlier, but poor Kyoya, he's only a Mastery 9. He is not looking too hot right now. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Also, I thought Wombo was in a fight. He was just finding a board that I guess hit him or something. You have uh, uh, Aethers getting uh, kind of sandwiched between Kyoya and Wombo right now, but actually maybe it's just Kyoya ratting it out and avoiding a fight altogether. Wumbo, ready to third party, because if I have to say, like, Wumbo is probably the strongest person in the lobby right now, just in terms of his ability to kill people. He's already on three kills. He's been doing very well so far in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if he was maybe the strongest person in the lobby, but remember, it's still anyone's game at the moment. Anyone could potentially third party a very key fight between Wumbo and anybody else. And also, if he can't land those skills, then he is not going to be doing too much in general. We also have Nazimi, who does still have Wick Buffer, about a, about two minutes or so, and we do also have Mia's Ray who got all the items off of Wick, so you can't count him out either. He has very good itemization. Oh, Wumbo goes down to wait, wait, a verse goes down to Wumbo? I didn't even see that happening. Got caught over here in the corner and did end up falling. All right, one of our favorite Hedgen players does end up going down as Aisu is now fighting against Kilia. Yep. Well, it looks like it wasn't much of a fight. It kind of just stopped right away, but it looks like Kilia is being sandwiched between Aisu and Nazimi right now. This is looking real dangerous for Kyoya. Potentially a situation where he's going to be into the red zone to get away from both of these guys. Because Aisu is relentless. He will not let this go. And of course, why would Nizimi ever let this go as well? <gasps> Kyoya is going to be forced to the red zone. Oh no, Aisu does with the tornado. But it doesn't matter. He does not a beautiful Q. And Kyoya will drop. We're seeing Mizra and Aetheris taking a fight over here by school. Aetheris dropping super, super low. But if a beautiful ult placement is going to force Mizra out of him. We're seeing Aisu Sama being forced into Avenue. We can only imagine the Zimi did put that pressure there, making sure that Aisu could not come back out from where he came in. And Aetheris, oh no, Mizuroi letting up the pressure. Probably assuming that Aetheris actually probably went around. Aetheris is going to be able to get out of school pretty much unscathed. He's very low, but he is going to be able to heal back up. Nazimi still with that wick buff, just uh, barely about to run out, but Aisu does not want to take that engagement as long as that is still a factor in that fight. We also have Magnus Save. You can't count him out. Like, this is, this is a player and the character you can never ignore. He's always ready to third party. He's always ready to jump in on your engagement and say, like, hey, is there a party here? I'm ready to be a part of it. And he's going to throw a bike in there and probably try to blow someone up uh, to get that extra little, uh, you know, extra little kill, extra little cooldown reset, all that good stuff. Even Nazimi and Aisu, they're still fighting each other with Magnus Ape waiting in the wings as well as Water Fudge as well. Oh, the Q from Magnus Ape lands on Aisu. Now Aisu is surely going to fall here. Bike comes out, deals a ton of damage. Nazimi, very low as well. Water Fudge ready for the third party. Oh, gets him with the E. Oh, misses the weapon skill, but it doesn't matter. Nazimi and Aisu both end up going down. A classic case of uh, maybe not wanting to start the party because you might be the first one to leave it. Magnusape and Water Punch. The last two remaining in this four-person engagement will end up fighting each other. But Magnusape, he lands the E and the Q. And that will be one less chase that he can actually... Or sorry, that Water Fudge can actually pursue. Because once he gets done with that slow, man, it's over at that point. You just gotta, you gotta catch your losses and just find another engagement. Uh, I don't know about that. In most of the time, I would agree, but we gotta check out Water Oh, if you, My get, man if you get stunned by Magnus, it's hard. it's hard to chase. If you get stunned and slowed by Magnus, it's hard to chase. 
Oh no, I agree. Yeah, but yeah. what if I came to dance? He has. We have a Rockers on him. We have a Hermes. We have a Mithril Shield. He is the fastest Lennox on the planet. 4.59 MS right now. I don't know if Magnus could exactly outrun that, but generally Magnus is, yeah, very, very, very hard to catch. Yeah, I fully agree there. Also, uh, we are seeing Aethers, who had a couple of traps set up right here to try and catch Wumbo. Wumbo trying to put the engagement back onto Aethers. Aethers dodging his skill shots. We're seeing that late game sort of uh, advantage for the, the non-amp heart players that once you have that movement speed, you can sort of dodge these skills a little better. But the beautiful pull from Water Fudge grabs Aethers. He already didn't have a lot of red time to begin with, and he is being forced into the red here as Minasaur is ready to, to third party this little Whoa! He goes over the wall. He's ready to dance too, my man. He's got everything locked in, loaded, and ready to go. Aethers with just three seconds left. Only a couple of fire traps to work with. Now, Water Fudge versus Minasaur. Yeah, we're looking at Water Punch is stuck between a rock and a hard place here. Magnus save and these were trying to put some pressure, but no. We're seeing Wombo trying to put the re-engagement back with Aethers and a beautiful dash dance over all of those fire traps. Only getting hit by one, but procking all three of them. Aethers only down to one ultimate charm now. He does need to dodge the cube. No, does get hit by it. And it looks like this will potentially be the end for Aetheris here. Yes, he cannot go back in the red zone. He only had two seconds on timer. And Magnus save from the corner of the screen. He <laughs> saw the noise and he prepped the bike. He wanted that kill. He was thirsty for it. Water Fudge kiting Mizroy out here. But we are seeing Mizroy does have a ton of moon speed, but so does Water Fudge. And a Lennox is their strongest when they are being chased. They have a ton of utility to their name. And that is where they really are able to capitalize on damage. But Mizroy is slowly chipping away at Water Fudge here. That bleed is doing a ton for me as well right now. Every time he gets just even one little hit in, that is a ton of damage just being ticking like over time because of that bleed. Doesn't matter if you can't really do the consistent like constant hits onto him, but one hit every couple of seconds or so, it'll give you plenty of time to let that bleed tick. Now, we are seeing Wombo. Our last four players, Wombo, Magnus Ape, Water Fudge, and Mia's Roy. Ooh, the beautiful combo landing from Wombo. The charm into the queue, dealing so much damage, but Water Fudge, since he has so much defense as well, and a lot of max HP, he is not really gonna get chunked out or really killed from just one combo from Wombo. Now, Wombo, he's gonna disengage and try and find another engagement. Magnus Ape, he finds the stun into the slow, into the bat skill. Mia's Roy kind of losing about a thousand HP there, but that's kind of the extent of Magnus' combo. Another stun. Some spins. Oh, wait, this could turn into a bike kill if he gets the... No, it's on cooldown. Wait, no, it's not on cooldown. He just didn't want to bike there. It, uh, was that... Was that... No, it has to be on cooldown. Maybe. I mean, I, I saw it on the, on the UI there. Maybe it was just like a second or so away. Either way, we're into our final square here. All players not in this final square will be losing time over time. Oh, that little timer over their head indicating how much time before they will explode immediately. The charm from Wumbo landing as uh, Waterfudge is now forced to go back into the red to heal up. Me is right. It's just opting to stay as far out of the zone as possible because he does not have a lot of HP after that engagement with Magnusave earlier on the south side of the main building. Now, Waterfudge, just two seconds left. is forced to go back into the zone or else he will immediately die. Mizra going in for the third party, trying to get the snipe on him, gets it with the dagger skill, and now Wumbo and Magnusape are both kind of bleeding out against Mizra. Yeah, it looks like right now Mizra is up Try to go for the fight. He knows he can take. He knows he can't really push onto Wombo here. So he's going to try and get the kill onto Magnusape. But again, Ooh. Magnus is such a hard character to kill. But no, he still has the ultimate up to his name. But no, right now we are going to see a beautiful charm. Wombo. My goodness, he is so clean with it. Getting the charm into the two. Give him game number two. Another six kill first place. My goodness. Yeah, and I have to say one of the most exciting things about that whole thing was the fact that he charmed him right into that Venn diagram of the two traps, which ensured that he ate, I think they were just fire traps, but he ensured that he ate both of them. There's a ton of true damage coming between those two traps. One thing I want to highlight in that fight between Miasroy and Magnusape was the fact that Magnusape tried to, I, I, I got what he was doing. He was trying to, to maybe kill Miasroy just on timer because Miasroy did not have a ton of timer, neither did Magnusape, so he tried to stun him there. But unfortunately for him, Miasroy had already started his ultimate. That puts you in the unstoppable state, which means you cannot be CC'd, you cannot be stunned, you cannot be pushed around. And that was what he needed in order to get that last little burst of damage in order to take out Magnusape. And in the end, Wumbo, with an insane six kill performance, will end up taking game number two here in the ERCL solo finals. Yeah, back to that previous point. We, one thing Mizora has been very, very consistent at is buffering that ultimate against any form of CC. You know, I, I, I can't imagine he's practiced really against a lot of Magnuses lately. 
but he did have the timing down just right to be able to secure such a tight kill because had he messed that up, he would have exploded the timer and Magnus Ape would have been the one to potentially take that first place. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that I have to say is that even though Wumbo had six kills, even though Wumbo did an insanely good job, the rest of the lobby didn't have any high kill placements. We generally had most of the kills distributed amongst the players. We had Mia's right with two kills, Waterfudge with two kills, Nazimi with two kills, Sleeping Lion with two kills. So many players got one to two kills. I, I don't want to mention everyone got one kill, but like I, it was pretty well distributed. So honestly, the points are being sort of evenly distributed amongst all these players, aside from obviously Wumbo, who had an insane six kill victory. That is a enormous placement for Wumbo. And it's going to be putting him really high up there in the placements uh, going into the final three rounds. We do have the scores ready. So if you are curious where your favorite players are currently standing amongst their uh, com fellow competitors, we can check that out right now. So currently in first place, dethroning Gobu, AKA 50 DKP minus is Wumbo with 35 points, an insane placement and kill rate from the last game. Gave him that massive lead that he uh, did not have before. I'll say it that well. Uh, 50 DKP minus has dropped down to second. It's still, yeah, it's still a very good position to be in considering prizing does pay out, you know, beyond first place. And uh, yeah, I, well, how about the rest of them? Yeah, we're looking at Mizroy just still slithering his way into that third place with 29 points, having a very nice performance this game, hitting that second place in the previous match. We're looking at Magnus Ape again in the final circle, not really getting a whole lot of kills, but is at 28 points in the fourth place, a verse fifth place with 26 points. And again, you might be noticing the discrepancy between third and fifth is six points, which is not a lot at all. And we're looking at sixth place with Keshir with 19 points and beyond that it's looking a lot harder for our contestants here but again that was two games out of five guys we have a quite a series ahead of us and man these placements are going to be looking vastly different by the time the series is over yeah and one thing like you mentioned is that yeah the point like discrepancy between second and fifth is only um like five-ish points between them like that's insanely tight in this top like section of the seating also 35 points for first does not mean that they are that far ahead of anyone else either it's still anyone's game to take that top spot and take home all of uh, all of that big prizing for first place 35 31 29 28 like these are all placements that could really anyone could take it any one game could accelerate you 40 points even potentially under the scoring system so yeah it's still anyone's game if your favorite player is currently struggling in the bottom half do not worry it is still anybody's game so one thing that i am noticing though is that both of our amp hearts have actually made it into the top six that's something that is to me a little bit surprising not because i think amp heart is not a good character i think amp heart is a fan or sorry heart in general is just a fantastic character but amp heart is not something we've been seeing a ton of lately and so i am i'm surprised and happy to see both of our amp heart players doing it so well yeah absolutely i mean the lately is an understatement I don't I can't think of anybody really who just sits there and plays Ampart. It is a build that just kind of faded away with time. It got popularized a little bit by yourself. And you know, after that that resurgence, it just kind of went away. Nobody really talked about it anymore. Everybody was on the Enad variant. But people do forget when Heart has a ton of cooldown reduction, she is incredibly safe. That Q is on a practically three second cooldown, giving you a 50% slow, multiple dashes does have the ultimate to reset fights does have the charm to you know peel for herself it is so so hard to kill hearts if she is not wanting to die it's just such a strong dominant character yeah i Imagine. fully i fully agree man honestly i i really do like i think that amp heart in general is just sort of a consistent character because you have that mobility you have that burst potential also burst is really important in these lobbies because the lobby's been playing very passive very third party oriented and the fact that you do have that burst means that you can sort of sweep into a fight and just like instantly chunk somebody and then get out of there right because you do have that high mobility you do have that fight reset and you do have that burst like those are like the three best things for third partying that's exactly what amp heart is delivering uh in these lobbies that's what wombo was doing all game last game always coming into the third party, always just cleaning up kills and then getting away scot-free because you can just sort of do that on heart. Like that's just one of the best things about that character. Um, also, that's kind of why Magnus is doing so well. 
at least on Magnus Ape. Or Magnus Ape is doing so well on Magnus, is what I meant to say. <laughs> uh, basically, like, he's just getting in at the right moments. Maybe sniping someone with a bike or, or just being consistent in getting to that final zone. At least securing a kill or two and just making it to the high placement. And he's doing very well on that in general. Magnus Ape was a player who I definitely, if I if I was a betting man, I would have probably put, you know, a, a few a few points in favor of Magnus doing well because, or sorry, Magnus Ape doing well because he's got that game sense. He's got that really good sort of heads up behavior when it comes to knowing exactly when players are going to be engaging, when he can stop by and maybe clean something up before getting out of there. Like, he's just really good. Yeah, no, he's a fantastic player, top of the ladder for a reason. Always just been a very level-headed guy and just trying to figure out how he can improve his own gameplay and just trying to really innovate the games that he does play an absolute ton of. And, I mean, again, like it's very, very shocking to see him really just on that Magnus one. We really, nobody really expected and just, just so such a convincing performance on Magnus pretty much every single game so far. Um, but we did see some mix-ups here, though. Ooh. We're seeing two pretty nice mix-ups. You want to talk about those guys? So these are two characters we had not seen yet. And honestly, it kind of shocked me because these are two characters that I expected to see so much earlier. Although maybe not Razi because Razi is not really played by anyone who made it into the finals, but she is still a very good character. Now, the one character who I am shocked we have not seen yet is Shukai. Shukai, amongst the opinions of most of the, the higher-up NA players, most of them feel that Shukai is the best character in the game. Like, he, he is so consistent. He has very good infinite scaling on his offensive and defensive stats, thanks to that cooking mechanic in his kit. Uh, he's insane, right? And Water Fudge and Magnus Ape were both players who made it to the finals playing Shukai. So it surprised me that we didn't see any yet, but here we are. Water Fudge finally bringing out the Shukai after playing Lennox for two games, which is uh, it's still so surprising to me because that's not a character I expected him to play in the first place. Yeah, wasn't a character I expected at all. He caught me completely off guard on ladder earlier when I'm like, why is there a Lennox in my game? And why is it you? I've never seen Water Fudge on this character ever. So it was just such a weird, weird shock to me. And now we are seeing him back to where what he is normally known for is that Shuka, where he has strong, such a strong performance with in the group stages. And one thing I do want to point out is some of the guys who have fallen earlier in the bracket. We are looking at people like Prismaticism who have been having a very rough time in the previous games. We are looking at, you know, ooh, <laughs> Gobu <laughs> coming in with the Ballista. Water Fudge is going to be pushed out. You cannot sit. This is Gobu zone now. You will not walk in here. Yeah, I'm actually curious if the uh sort of the call to not play shukai came from these players deciding that gobu would be here because most people have observed that gobu goes pawn second like most people know that it's not a surprise ballista goes pawn second generally and so as a result maybe they just didn't want to play anything that went pawn second because they were pretty sure they were going to die to gobu like look at this we have like basically nobody over here in the main area pawn aside from these emma players who are just now making it into the zone so I i'm starting to think that maybe the magnus the pivot away from Magnus was thinking that the lobby was going to be too targeted against Mag- or sorry, I keep saying Magnus, Shukai. Too targeted against Shukai, so they opted to not go for that character. That's my only theory, really. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely very interesting. I We do know these players are have been scouting out their, their pools. You know, they saw the group stages. You know, they've been talking amongst each other. So And they've been playing against each other a ton on ladder. So at this point, nobody's hand is is a secret anymore everyone's hand is on the table you know exactly what they're playing with and so at that point you got to figure out what you could do for yourself to try and reroute around that to give yourself the best odds and of course the best odds is going to be never go to that pawn second when you have a ballista to deem the game as i can't think of another character in the game that could potentially even contest that zone too okay so we are seeing the uh the sequel to the sequel to the weirdest fight of all time as we're now seeing shubi senpai excuse me we're now seeing shubi senpai versus uh kesher for the third time in a row and uh yeah but this time it looks like we also have prismaticism just teeping into the area trying to get on top of this uh zone but finding a weird engagement between these two players instead should be some dropping very low this might be another kill oh should be does in fact get hit by that fully charged q it is going to be 
I, I, he's taking such good food though. He's taking for 47 a tick. And it's probably something like mocha bread or something like that. But he doesn't have the finished weapon. He's still just on the bleeder. Casher missing the Q and now he's already on the way to the by with the ultimate. Casher goes down, but Sleepy Lion is here to clean up the fight. He is saying, no, no, no. I am ready to third party. And if you're just on a blue weapon, I'm going to take you down instead. Oh, but can he take him down though? As of last patch, Sylvia's rank one bike is on a 20 second cooldown. It's gonna be quite a while before Sleepy Line does have that cooldown back up. And I am a liar. Do not listen to me. It is back up right away. And we are seeing Shu Sleepy Line going in back onto Shubi Senpai here. But that scab mentioned earlier, Shubi Senpai is taking such good food. It is not worth Sleepy Line's time. It is gonna take way too long to finish him off. So Shubi Senpai will pick up the first game. First kill, Uggs game in the form of Kesher, and will walk away with his life. Shubi Senpai must be feeling, oh my god, Shubi Senpai, I am so sorry. The fourth party, this is not looking good right now, as Goop is ready to slam that reactivation and deal a ton of true damage. Boom, there it is. Now, if the E lands, which it did, Shubi Senpai will surely be falling here as Goof gets his first kill of the round. And meanwhile, on another side of the map, Water Fudge, our first Shukai player of the ERCL finals, does go down to a verse. A verse picking up a kill must be feeling pretty good. Water Fudge was well built too, but a verse is a uh, full build himself. But maybe I can't tell. I can't tell if you got some of those items off of Water Fudge. But either way, I'm surprised. A verse popping a popping a shoe guy before he's able to sort of get to that late game period must be feeling pretty happy about that. Yeah, one thing we do know about Hedgen quite well, as I'm sure all of us have experienced, is what if you ever run into the Hedgen and they get the first move. You're probably as good as dead. Unless you go tanky enough to survive that initial burst, you are going to drop. And of course, when we talk about two very squishy mage characters, really whoever gets to jump first is going to be the one that comes out victorious. And looks like in that case, it was a verse. And now we're looking like a sleeping line going on to Goof here. He's more than happy to take some fights here. He's full build and a half. While Goof, on the other hand, well, he doesn't even have the missile thing. Yeah, he does have the boost and he does have the white crane fan. So he is very, very fast. And of course, if he ever does proc his passive, he is going to be zooming out of there. So it's never an easy character to kill, even early on into the game. So Goof will escape. Wait, did he manage to... How does he not have branches? All you need, <laughs> all you need to finish the Sword of Justice up into a Mistleton is just some branches. I thought for sure he was finishing it right there. That is the biggest upgrade for that weapon, by the way. The purple is not very powerful because all of the amp comes when you finish the full gold. I am surprised to see Goof still not quite there yet, although I'm sure he's going to be finishing it any second. We saw a fight over in a hospital between Ghost Electricity and Nazimi, but it didn't end up tr sort of, you know, turning into anything too significant, as both those players do end up disengaging from each other and just sort of walking away. But now we are seeing three players over here as Ghost Electricity goes for the re-engage on Nazimi, but AZ is here for the third party and the re-engage. That bunny throwing so many daggers so fast. Nazimi does end up going down to the cutest little Shoichi I've ever seen. Yeah, that's, a, that's one adorable bunny, and I am quite a fan of it. Please, Nimble Neuron, when are we in that skin? Please? Yeah, I, I, want, I want Bunny Shoichi. Wait, that might be very different. Anyway, a verse versus Kyoya. Kyoya? I did, wait, did Kyoya just go down there? It must be because a verse is on two kills. Kyoya does end up going down. And now we have Superior 1 versus Prismaticism over here in Chapel. It looks like Superior getting the good catch on to Prismat. Prismat just caught into the vortex of Emma skills once the Cal drops us down. If you don't have that W or that E to get through it on Hyunwoo, you're in bad shape and you're probably going to end up going down. Unfortunately, Prismat unable to find that late game that he's been looking for. And Superior One picks up another kill or a sorry, his first kill over here in this third round. This is the halfway point of the ERCL finals. This is where you need to really make the magic happen, because if you cannot find your points here, you may just have no chance to make it into the top. Once you uh, once we cross that halfway point, it's going to be really hard to find those extra points in order to make it into the top six. Yeah, it's, it's going to be quite hard for people dropping early, you know, like Prismaticism. They've been having quite the rough game for the last few games to make it into that top six. But again, you do have two more games. You always have the potential of getting that pop-up game. And speaking of pop-up games, I, I Averse looks like he's found his chest ride. He, he needs to stop bursting people before <laughs> I have even a chance to go check out that fight. Averse getting a kill on Aisu Sama. Aisu does go down. Yeah, no, again, Hedgen is just such an explosive character. If they ever lock eyes with you, you are as good as dead. Ghost Electricity trying to get the preemptive ultimate down to Aetheris here. 
does not connect, but it is on a very, very low cooldown. Ooh, we are seeing the heart ultimate coming down. It did have the healing reduction on him, so it's going to be taking a little bit less, but Aif will walk away here. We are seeing a verse and Miseroy taking a dance over at Temple, and this is a matchup they talk about all the time. They, a verse generally has a very, very hard time with Miseroy, especially into late game, so if he's able to take him out now, it is going to be absolutely amazing. From beautiful movement from a verse, avoiding the passive proc from Miseroy, and that is his hardest matchup out of the game completely. This is looking like to be a, a lobby that Averse can completely sweep through if he's able to keep his momentum. Averse is already on four kills. He is having an insane game so far. And like you just said, he took out one of his biggest uh, competition characters in the entire lobby with the Miyazori on Kathy going down already. That is huge for Averse. Averse must be really feeling it right now. That is a fantastic place to be if you are Averse or an Averse fan. In uh, some cases, we also do have Magnus Ape doing magnus ape things he's just he's alive he's existing he is vibing also a few more things i want to highlight we already are seeing 50 dkp minus aka gobu he did not get uh sort of third partied in the early parts of this game and he is able to make it to that mid game he's already on 33 farm insane farm so far for this player way outperforming everyone else in farm compared to everyone else like 21 is the closest and everyone else is sort of in the teens at the moment while he's already at 34 an insane farm count for gobu also one more thing i want to mention is uh where is it uh, aethers is on his third character of the tournament or third third character of the finals every game he's played someone else game one he was on uh nadine game two he was on adriana now game three he's on enad heart yeah these are all and not like these are very surprising these are all characters he has played quite a bit especially over time he was originally known as the heart player so this does not surprise me at all uh and i, I wouldn't be surprised to see if he's able to get his pop-off game maybe hopefully sometime soon because you know enad heart is one of those characters that can absolutely explode if left unchecked and especially if you look at the characters yep and we're looking at the right person like kiara kiara doesn't really ever build to deal with Enad. So if Aethers is ever, ever able to take the matchup against Goof here, it is not favorable for Goof in the slightest. Oh yeah, something to note. Our favorite businessman is still alive 10 minutes of the game. He did not die randomly at Pond this time around. He is good to go. He is avoiding Pond like the plank. He knows that it is a graveyard. He's just staying away at all costs. Yeah, in fact, it was sort of a, a difference in the timelines this time, as he was the one who got the kill over in Pond this time. We're seeing Sleeping Lion with the the phalanx of fire traps over here in Pond, ready to take that wick uh, wick fight at any point. Magnus Ape, right, trying to get away because that wick buff on Sleeping Lion is going to make it really hard for Magnus Ape to even win this fight at all. But he's doing the patented Magnus throw a bulk broken bullet. Uh, slam you into a wall, throw a broken bullet, slam you into a wall, you know, combo strategy. But he kind of missed both of them this time. That gives Sleeping Lion an opportunity to get here in on him. But with the bike, it's probably going to be the end of the chase. But that being said, uh, hey, Sylvia gets really fast on that bike. And Magnus's bike does not last that long in the early game anymore. So that might be uh, might be another chase that he can actually end up taking. Aether versus Averse over here in Temple. Averse seeing there's some pings over near Magnus. Magnus might be walking right back into Averse, which is not where he wants to be, considering all of his defensive tools are down at the moment. Wait, Averse is actually getting right comboed. Now. Wait a second. This might be a fight for Magnus. Yeah, Magnus not having that bike, though, to finish him off, but... I don't know, it's looking kind of scary for Averse here. He is getting stuck between Magnus Ape and Aetherus. But besides them, there's a third, there's a third, fourth, fifth, and sixth party waiting for him outside this temple entrance. If anyone knows this Averse here, it's going to look pretty grim. ECU dropping incredibly low, and Sleeping Line will pick up his first kill of the game here. Back to save, going to grab the console. Averse trying to put off some pressure onto Sleeping Line here. Wants to get the person with Wickline out of the game, knowing that, well, they are very, very scary. Even if all those kills Averse has, he could easily drop to a character with the Wickline buff. We're seeing Goop and Ghost Electricity. This is not a fight that they are exactly uh, unfamiliar with. As both the players have fought several times this game already. The old answer Ghost Electricity dealing a lot of damage, but now Goof. He knows that ult's down, so he can probably re-engage this fight because he didn't take quite a lot of damage that he expected uh, in that first little pass from the Razi player. Also, I I'm not too familiar with that matchup between those two characters, but I, I feel like it kind of favors the Kiara. Like, it, it didn't seem like Goof took nearly enough damage there for it to be a, a like quick and closed out fight for the Razi. And if she's able to lifesteal a little bit more, that would probably be a fight that goes over to Goof. Wait a minute. Oh, is this yeah, the bait of a lifetime? Oh, Sleeping Lion right into the Pendulum Axe. 
gets the guaranteed ultimate from Ghost Electricity. Now, Sweet Line is in a lot of trouble, but Ghost Line or Ghost Electricity, keep, keep in mind, he doesn't potentially know that that bleed is ticking from Sweet Line. Sweet Line is very strong at the moment with both the Boots of Hermes and the Wick Buff still ticking. Now, Ghost Electricity, he's in good shape with the auto arms. Well, wait, wait, Ghost Electricity, these items are crazy. He has Chinese Opera Mask, Auto Arms, and Moonlight Pen already. He had a BF Blood Sample and a Four Score. How is that even possible? He didn't get Wick. Why do we need a wick when pond bears are always going to do you justice? Clearly getting those uh, RNG components off some bears earlier on into the game, but man, he is looking real nice, and those items going to have a ton of HC with the Chinese armor mask, but oh no, Magnus, our favorite biker here, is dropping quite low, going to be forced to, well, bike out, going to be hitting the chicken there to reduce the cooldown of his ultimate, and he's going to be forced into pawn through the red zone. We're seeing a verse trying to take the re-engagement onto Superior. Superior, despite getting his way out, is trying to take a turn there, drawing everything down, but it will not be enough to take a verse out. Yeah, it looks like that was a... Uh... That was a nice little like tricky, ooh, a nice little tricky turn from a uh, superior there to maybe try and turn a bad situation into a good one for him, but instead just opting to get out. But man, that burst on the turnaround was was quite significant. Uh, honestly, that was really well played by superior. Ooh, Gobu might be walking right next to Magnusape. Uh, catches him there, sees it's there, but man, the burst coming out of Magnusape. Gobu's just trying to get out of here. He doesn't want to be a part of this fight at all. That was that was that was honestly surprising. I I, I like. Generally speaking, the rule, like, when you're playing Magnus with this build, generally speaking, if your opponent has more than 2.2-ish K HP, it's a bad fight. You do not want to take it, but he was not afraid. Sleeping Lion versus Ghost Electricity. It's so close. I don't get back any second. It's Sleeping Lion who gets the final blow. Oh, my God. Ghost Electricity just need to attack one more time, and Sleeping Lion would have died there. An insane fight between these two players going down to the wire as Sleeping Lion just barely comes out on top. Yeah, seeming like very, very clutch at the very end of that fight there. Getting the transformation off to get the enhanced auto attack from his passive. And that was just, just a little bit of edge he needed to take Ghost Electricity out of this match. Sleeping Lang with a very, very strong performance on that Sylvia today. You know, character. Ooh, wait, we're seeing a verse going out to Aetheris here. Aetheris dropping to the fire trap, trying to get the charm down onto the fire trap, but that is not going to work out for him. He does get his own ultimate down, but he, again, he is just getting absolutely chunk, and these chakrams are not helping. They're still live and loaded, even if you are in that heart ultimate. Oh, no. But one thing it is, we mentioned earlier, it is very, very hard to taste the heart <gasps> down. We are seeing superior game chase out with superior line. The TP, whatever, whoever that was, did get cancelled. And it looks like Aetheris will drop, giving a verse five kills for this game. Man, a verse is in such fantastic shape at the moment. Oh, Superior. Oh, okay. I, I, never mind. Never mind. Uh, I forget what I was about to say. So, Sleepy Lion, trying to chase a Superior there. And honestly, the surprising thing to me is that, yeah, I, even though Aethers did sort of get away, he maybe opted for a, a less safe path, which gave a verse like wall hops that he needed to get over and end up cleaning up that kill. One thing I want to highlight between that fight between uh, Sleeping Lion and Superior one was that there was somebody about to TP in right on top of their fight, which could have probably been the end of uh, Superior one in that fight, but ended up canceling the TP. Like that really could be the complete game changer between him dying and him living there. Magnus Ape fighting against Gobu, but not doing quite nearly as well as last time. He is very low. If these Qs land from Gobu, it will be a ton of damage and probably just spell the end for Magnus Ape. But Magnus Ape, he manages to juke it out and he manages to get away. Yeah, Magnus Ape just barely getting away with his life here. You know, very, very squishy character, very, very squishy build in the form of Magnus Ape. He can't really take a lot of fights. He only has 2100 HP to his name, which is not a whole lot, despite the quite the large number. If he does get hit by anything, it is going to take about like half itself right away. And the last thing you want to be doing is fighting a character that can outrange you like this, Nadine. I cannot imagine being a very favorable matchup at all as well. Nadine really never does approach you a lot of the damage does come from that q or those auto attacks and gobu being one of the best if not the best of the nna is pretty much always gonna be spacing properly so you know if you're expecting him to misplay i would not count on it yeah and one more thing that's kind of blowing my mind right now is the fact that all of these players like we're seeing everyone funneling up through this tiny little choke point over here in temple because the final zone is going to be alley which means you cannot be in pond or temple once this timer counts down to zero uh but averse and sleeping lion they're still trying to find their way in and wumbo is here ready to, to sort of gatekeep it and make sure nobody can can get in 
But yeah, it's surprising me that these players are not necessarily going for the hard gatekeeper. After seeing Magnusape jumping onto Goop, dealing a ton of damage, but Magnusape is not necessarily finding the damage he needs to find as Goop is not quite in that execute zone with that bike. The activation from Goof goes on to Magnusape. He dodges the E though, so he'll be able to get away from that before it turns into anything too grim. Now we're seeing Sleeping Lion fighting against a verse over in Temple as both these players are still. Well, they're still not in the final safe zone, so they're going to need to move over there as Wumbo is ready to third party as he sits in this bush on Aizu's body. Yeah, looks like we are seeing right now the top zone situation. We are looking at Sleeping Lion. We are looking at Wumbo. We are looking at Magnusape, Gobu, and who am I? Superior Anniverse. And our tops of the situation again these games and despite them speeding up ever so slowly it tends to just keep ending up being my goodness just so many people in these final zones you could just never really predict who is ever going to take these right now if i were to give it to anybody it would of course be the nadine with 65 on their name and just claiming this little corridor in alley gonna make an absolute Sorry, making it absolutely impossible for anybody to walk through this area if anybody's able to come through here they're, they're gonna die Gobu is going to secure the zone as his own, but the moment the actual final zone does open up, I oh, don't know, I fear for everyone. And right now, speaking of fearing for everyone, Averse and Sleeping Lion taking a little dance over at the back end of Alley. Sleeping Lion just putting down that pressure. Averse getting the wall hop, going up the stairs here. Try and, you know, just create some distance from the foe that is Sylvia just, Sylvia just so good at closing at this, especially now that her, the ultimate doesn't have any cooldown whatsoever. She can chase you as long as she has fuel, so Hedgen, one of the few characters that's able to really get out of that situation. And right now, aside from that, it's just a whole lot of poking. Goof, cooking some potatoes. We're looking at Wumbo, just throwing out some cues. Magnusape, just choosing, looking at a car sales. Like, there's not a whole lot going on. Yeah, I gotta say, one of, the, prepping. one of the things that's been surprising me, well, I, I guess I'm not surprised at all. <laughs> one of the things that I've been observing is the fact that Magnusape has been making it to every single final square so far. Now we're seeing a verse once again finding Sleeping Lion. These players have been fighting for a while now. Sleeping Lion putting pressure onto a verse, a verse putting pressure onto Sleeping Lion, but neither player can f quite connect uh, the full kill onto these players. The Fire Trap does end up hitting Sleeping Lion as he goes for the chase. Now we are also seeing Wombo fighting Magnusape somewhere else on the map, but it doesn't matter because these players are going at it at the moment. A verse getting the fear onto Sleeping Lion. He's being forced backwards. And keep in mind, he is low on field, but that E does connect. And Goof is ready for the third party. That verse is in a ton of, ton of trouble right here. And Goof is... Oh, wait, the fight's back on Goof. Goof's in trouble. Goof is going to go down to just one more Q by a verse. Six kills for a verse right now as he is in incredibly good shape to take the probably the most points out of this whole game. If he doesn't win the, the, the match, he's probably going to take the... What? What a... What? That's a very scary chicken. I, I I respect this. I think he thought that there was going to be someone in this push, and he was like, I'm gonna get you. I have a surprise. Or he pressed the wrong button. One or the other. Now, we have Gobu taking this side of the zone, and if I know one thing about Nadine, it's that they are not popular in the final zone. We are already seeing Magnusate putting a ton of damage onto him. That's a beautiful crossbow skill from Gobu. is going to be knocking Wumbo away. Now, Magnusate is covering all these players. He will drop by Sleeping Lion's hand. Now, it's Wumbo versus, Ma or versus Sleeping Lion, as we also have Superior 1 versus Averse. We have Gobu on the side, trying to heal up in this red zone, as Averse is taking Superior 1 down to just uh, about 800 -ish HP with Sleeping Lion. Full HP with full zone control. The only player not ticking in the red right now. Yeah, right now we got we have five players left. Right now for the final circle. And it looks like everyone's down to at least sub 10 seconds. 50 DKB minus is going to be standing in the center of the circle, which is the place you want to be. You are taking aggression from everybody. Crossbow skill is going to whiff here. Wombo whiffing the charm. Gobu with a beautiful size. It's one second on his timer. Wombo throwing on the dance. Forcing the reset of the fight as he did with both his abilities. But again, Gobu is just stuck between everybody. How is he still alive? Yeah. We're going to see the timer finally take out zero seconds. Averse getting his seventh kill of the game. He just gets every kill. Wombo dropping it to Superior. And man, this is just going everywhere. Yeah, Averse ends up picking up the kill onto Gobu. But I don't know exactly who got the kill. Normal. I think it was Sleeping Line needed. So that is extra timer for both these players. Superior down to just nine seconds on his timer. But Averse is only on six. If Sleeping Line or if Superior is able to keep him in the red. Averse might die to the red zone here. He's trying to get the kill. Just get the timer. He doesn't Superior goes down! Now Sleeping Lion is going for the final blow. Superior, down in just three seconds. Quality more on the Sleeping Lion. He jumped back in time! He has three seconds on his timer, so the Sleeping Lion is barely able in, to make it in as well, but he is also out of timer. Superior one, down to just 450 HP. Can he get the kill on a Sleeping Lion? It's not looking good, Tom! Sleeping Lion gets the kill, and he takes first place in the third round of the ERCL Finals.
go. Let's put it on. It's time to fight. And they put on a show. Everybody, every single player there was down to a single second under timer. I, Nobody had a second to spare. I, 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 like, what? How do you eat? You, you cannot prepare for these situations. You simply do not see this level of play anywhere else in like in like you don't see that on ladder you don't get those pulse pounding situations where there's five people all vying for like that tiny tiny little bit of timer left by killing another player and every second counts we saw a verse essentially forced into a situation where he had to kill superior or he was dead to timer and superior had to kill a verse or he was dead to timer these players are playing the craziest games and situations that no one has ever had to deal with before in ladder like i i can't believe it man i simply cannot believe it the result of that game all the kills were clumped onto the top three players my god yeah i don't have any words for how that game went at the very end it was such a crazy Final, I've personally never done a situation like that on ladder. I don't think any of us will. This is only what you this is what you get when you put the 18 best players in North America in one lobby and you make them duke it out. You are getting very safe gameplay. Everybody is pushed to their edge. They are micromanaging everything to the maximum value. And we saw that come out in this final circle. To those who think that I don't know. I don't even know what to tell you. And to those who think that final circle was a crazy, I don't even know what to tell you. There was so insane yeah it, it, I, I i i just can't believe it man I, I honestly just cannot believe it it's it's crazy so one thing i want to highlight there the kills from these players we had a verse with seven kills yes he dropped into third which is I, it felt like he got even higher than that but he ended up getting third in that match but he had seven kills to his name we had superior one getting second with three kills and sleeping lion a, a player that i think people were kind of sleeping on in general so to speak had four kills first place an insane performance from him and we do have the scores ready so let's shoot on over to those and see where our players currently stand after our third round of the finals currently in first place tom tell me who's in first place ah everyone's favorite hedge and streamer is a verse with the absolute insane pop off in his game seven kills third place one second timer 1v1 against superior averse with the 57 points in second place everyone's favorite ampar user is wumbo in third place we do have sleeping lion which again as Kaz said everyone was sleeping on with the sylvia after everyone thought she got gutted is coming in with such a crazy performance with 40 points guys how's that bottom half of the ladder looking so I gotta say, I still think anyone can take this still. Like the fact that Sleeping Lion, he's on 40 points, Gobu on 39, just one point away, currently in fourth place. We also had Magnus Ape with 33, Mia's right with 32. Like our top six is pretty, uh, almost pretty secure up there because Superior one just below him with 25. Like it's still anyone's game and that extends to every single point in the score sheet right now it doesn't matter if you're 18th 17th 16th 9th or 12th it doesn't matter you still have a shot of making it into that top six with two really good games that's how we play a five round finals it's still anyone's game um one more thing i just kind of want to mention is that we are seeing consistent performances out of our top six Mia's Roy, Averse, Wumbo, Sleeping Lion, Gobu, uh, Magnus Ape, these players are playing extremely consistent. They've been in almost every single top, like, final square situation so far. Maybe one round or, or so they're not in there, but, like, Magnus Ape has, has touched every single square. I, I have, like, these players who are doing well are doing well and they're doing well every game. It's not just a one-off thing. They're all playing extremely well today. Yeah, no, absolutely. These are the guys we expect to come in here and just do absolutely amazing. And well, they on quite the show right now. And we are seeing just people play so passive. We are seeing people pick their third parties properly. They're seeing people pick and choose what fights they can really take. They are just going for the late game. They're playing very, very slow and calculated. And it is paying off big time. But while you have people trying to play slow and methodical, we have the crazy people in the background the people like a verse people like wumbo they're just getting crazy pop-off games and it is working out in their favor absolutely 
guys we are going to go to a very brief break just so our players can you know go to the restroom get some water whatever they need to do but when we come back we have the final two rounds of the ercl finals so please by all means do not go anywhere we will be right back
Welcome back to the ERCL Finals. You guys saw games one, two, and three, and it's time to go to the thrilling conclusion of these finals and see games four and five. We have all of our players, well, they're, they're back and they're ready to get right into things. So before we get into it, let's break down the current standings and see like how they're all doing. Uh, currently in first place, we still have a verse with 57 points. In second place, we have Wombo with 43 points, Sleeping Lion with 40. 50 DKP minus AKA Gobu with 39 points, Magnus Ape with 33, and Mia's Roy TV with 32. It's still anyone's game. Anyone could break into the top six potentially, but that still remains to be seen as we do still have two rounds left in this tournament. I'm joined here today by my good friend, Tom Sorcerer. Tom, how are you doing today? Oh, I am doing fantastic. I, I feel like I'm just pumped with adrenaline right now. I'm so excited for these games. I, I never, Never thought I'd be so excited to see another final circle. How do you feel about this? Dude, these final like these final square engagements between these players have been some of the most exciting action I've actually ever seen playing these games. These players are playing to the absolute limits in every single possible way. We're seeing so many players making in with one second left. We're seeing all these players like going, I'm gonna die or you're gonna die or we're both gonna die and one of us is gonna get timer left. Like, you know, like all these crazy, crazy situations. I, I'm so excited to see more out of these players because I know they're going to deliver uh, and, and then some. So yeah, I, dude, I couldn't be more excited right now. These matches have been some of the most exciting matches of all time in this game, in this region, wherever. They're just so good. Yeah, no, they are absolutely crazy right now. I... I knew NA was going to come up. I knew these guys were going to put out an amazing show and I'm so excited. It looks like we are actually not seeing anything. Ooh. No, we are seeing some swap ups. There is one we person. Yeah, I can't spoil. Wait, wait. Very wait. interesting. Wait, we're seeing. Okay, we're seeing two swap ups, actually. We're seeing Prismaticism switching over to Razi from Hyunwoo. He has not been finding the success that he has been looking for that he had been getting in the previous game or the previous rounds of the tournament. Switching over to Razi as that Hyunwoo was not doing enough for him. And also, my the, the player who has played a different character every single round has picked up another character and is on Pistol Isol, starting over here in Beach. What on earth, Aethers? I, do you know Aethers as a Pistol Isol player? What is he? What? I don't know. I don't know if maybe it's, the stress is getting to him or what's going on here, but Pistol Isol, maybe he's been whipping off some off-stream tech right now because uh, this is definitely not something that we see coming out from Aethers. It's oh. going for this level one kill. The Q does whiff, unfortunately, but Aethers was definitely fiending for that level one kill oh. there. Oh my, no, oh. you hate to see it. Uh, oh. Go. Gobu notorious for finishing that power crossbow very early, or sorry, heavy crossbow, my apologies. That heavy crossbow very early over here in Hotel and killing anyone who tries to TP out. And since, since Prismaticism opted to go for a new build, it put him in Hotel. And maybe he wasn't quite thinking about the fact that, yes, Gobu's gonna be there. And yes, Gobu's gonna kill you. My man, Gobu getting his first early kill over here in the fourth round of the finals. Also, swapping up his route and going over to Temple. This is his more auto attack focused version of his build. Maybe he's going to catch Superior 1 off guard. That remains to be seen. Also, I can, we were talking about earlier, Aether's is aggression on the Ghost Electricity. I respect it. I really do. I don't think that was just an early grief strategy. I think he knew that if he kept landing cues onto Ghost Electricity, that was a kill very realistically that he could take. Yeah, absolutely. One of the highest damaging abilities in the entire game is Isol's Q, and even at rank 1, if you're able to just keep auto-attacking and proccing it, just stacking that damage up, it absolutely melts it. As we saw, that one Q did half of his health, and all you know, you know all he has is bread, so he's not going to be able to sustain through that burst. But man, that poor, poor kill on Prismaticism. One of the things that Dina's infamous for is if you are trying to go through her area, she is going to be camping the Hyperloop very early on. And just the Squirrel Traps do tremendous amount of damage on impact. Prismatis of just sadly had to fall there. Fall victim to Nadine. Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, like, 
it's a frustrating thing to watch because you know how frustrating it can be from uh, the perspective of the person getting killed by that Nadina on the teleporter. But hey, it's in the game. You gotta know that it's there. You have to respect it, especially since you know Gobu will be playing Ballista, and it's just sort of his favorite thing to do. We're seeing both of our amp parts meeting up over here in what is this hotel like they usually do but this time shubi senpai has adapted honestly i've noticed this shubi senpai not going there not going to be getting caught by a cashier in hotel this time instead opting for different routing hopefully to be safer and not have to deal with that amp heart early but then again like he beat cashier last time so maybe 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 that turns into something maybe he can do it again in this game because he is back over here in hotel again i don't have the weapon done yet though yeah, absolutely. Maybe he's trying to feel a little more confident in his, in his own gameplay there and just able to understand that that early power spike is actually really ridiculous. As the last time, he was only on the bleeder and was just able to go in and 100 0 the poor heart. And again, like heart's early damage, or sorry, Dylan's early damage is very, very insane. Ooh, looks like we're going to see a little dance off between the two hearts here. But the difference is Kesher has mana. Wombo is slowly having to regenerate over time here. Yeah, taking a knee in the bush while Kesher decides to take care of this camera here. Yeah, Wumbo trying to get a little bit of mana back before this turns into some sort of long, drawn-out engagement. Kesher with plenty of mana. Wumbo only enough to cast one uh, charge of his E. Now he's out of mana and forced to run away, and this could end up being a kill for Kesher. But the thing is, Kesher, while Kesher is, is ticking good mana, Wumbo is ticking good food. And Kesher doesn't seem to have that same sort of advantage here. But now we do also have Shubi Senpai ready to jump in and engage as Wumbo is in a very, very dangerous position. Shubi Senpai just gets the kill for free. Kesher just donated a free kill to his mortal enemy, Shubi Senpai. Good kill pickup from Shubi. <laughs> I love this. I want to see someone write a very dramatic tale on this of just Shuvi Senpai and his opposing hearts in that one little like every single game. It's been four games. How does this always happen? It's so funny. But now we might see potentially another engagement. We've seen this song like once and we might see it again. The same three people over at Beach. We're seeing Kesha, we're seeing Shuvi, we're seeing Goof. One decides to take a fight. Well, the you know the other is going to come and intervene. And it's like Kesha is going to be the first one to initiate the fight here. Ooh, the Q just going slightly to the right though, just barely missing. A nice little dodge there by Goof. We are seeing Magnus Ape trying to put pressure onto uh, who I believe was uh, Water Fudge, who pivoted away from that Shukai over to Dylan, uh, playing sort of Ena Dylan with the Divine Fist and the Crusader's armor. Now we're seeing Aether is putting a ton of pressure on Sleepyland, Sleepyland with not a lot of max HP to his name. Not a whole lot of items finished outside of what you get from those first three zones between Archery School and Hotel. Unfortunately though, Aether's had no mana to work with at the time, so, well, it looks like it's gonna be, uh, what's his name, City Lion getting away. Yeah, Wait, we are seeing, uh, which is very funny, we are seeing Aetheris on the most basic of builds, the typical three zone crit build, well, not more crit, you have the optics with like very tanky, the magazine, the motorhome, the Shifa Shah Jahan, very, very standard, very safe build, gives you a ton of HP to work with, usually lacking in food when trying to run that route. But the good thing is, and we this is kind of a talking point from earlier, when he was putting on the pressure onto uh, Ghost Electricity, well, one thing he was doing is actually pushing him out of the same exact route. They were both practically fighting for the same items. So now we're gonna see Aethers practically full build while Ghost Electricity is struggling to get his items. And now we're looking at Aethers and the Zimi taking a 1v1 here, but what a 1v1 will become a 2v1 very quick as Gobu comes in, potentially looking for the third party. Don't you think is gonna drop Aethers out of health and out of mana? He needs to start ticking. He's taking some pretty nice food here, but we are gonna see the ultimate drop down in Gobu getting his second kill of the game. Aethers is dead and potentially quite the loop pinata for Gobu here in the form of traps. Yeah, I had to say, Gobu did an exceptional job in the first round of this uh, of this final set between all of these players, but he sort of fell off in the second game, getting killed in, I believe, the first person to go down in the second game. The third game, he had pretty good placement, but he didn't quite get the kills he needed. Now, this might be his chance to secure his spot in prizing, since he did already get two kills, and he is sort of getting that momentum rolling. Getting those those early kills on Ballista Nadine is essential for keeping your momentum up and for getting those nice early points, since it's a little bit harder to close out those kills in the late game on that Ballista Nadine, but those early kills, those are really where Ballista Nadine shines, and Gobu is showing exactly why he is so notorious on that build, especially in the early game. Now, we're seeing Sleeping Lion in an engagement with Goof. Ooh, beautiful jump over the wall. 
Yeah, it looked like it was trying to get the chase down, but no, Steve Lennon with a beautiful sidestep here, but we can just see how fast Goof is right now. He is what just the? zooming towards Steve Lennon. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness, his items. It's Goof. Goof. Uh, Goof. Who did, how many bears did you have to pay off for those items, Goof? What on earth? He's on Boots of Hermes and the Mithril Armor by day, roughly day two or night one night. Wow. That is incredible. Like, I, I honestly cannot believe that he is already on those items this early. That is completely unheard of. Exceptional. Yeah, he is absolutely zooming right now. And I think Gobu locks eyes with Goofy. He's like, oh, those are some pretty nice items. I want those. But at the same time, he looks pretty terrified. We're going to see Gobu leaving the area. But we are going to see Mizroy, Emma, and Goof contesting this console here. They're all just kind of dancing around the wolves. Oh, beautiful sun coming from Ghost Electricity. Ecu with the ultimate drop and beautiful dagger dance. Ghost Electricity will drop. I gotta oh. say, beautiful comments from ECU. And one more thing I want to point out. I don't even know when this happened at this point, but a verse ended up going down at some point to somebody. I'm assuming it was ECU because he's on two kills. And if anyone's going to be beating uh, a verse, it's probably an early uh, Shoichi. So I'm sorry you missed that. But man, a verse who is currently in first place in the standings does end up going down. Miyazori chasing down Spear One. He goes over the wall with the hat suck as well. Miyazori will get sort of forced to uh to chase with all of his tools available throws down the deck oh the long range suture does in fact catch superior but superior is playing emma emma does get to go over the wall that is sort of uh <laughs> her main gimmick now but she's gonna be hiding over here on the side me is right gonna try and catch superior before they are able to get another uh ult charge but nah it looks like superior is able to just get away instead man crazy I, I feel like Mizra probably put a little bit too much respect on having that second ultimate charge up too soon. It looks like he started uh, instinctively padding around Chapel to try and get the cutoff point. But Superior was just waiting the entire time, possibly not even having it up just yet. We did see him use two charges pretty early on. And ooh, let's see we're seeing Water Fudge on Lee Dai Lin. This is not a change we noticed at all, actually. And we are seeing I versus Aisusama. But again, another Mithril Armor. What's going on with these guys? Who are we paying? Dude, everyone with mithril armor this early in the game should be sent by putting a ton of damage onto Nazimi, but he is sort of dropping low himself. He manages to get one more good hit here. Nazimi will end up but Koya is there as well. Might be able to get the third party. Get that steal on the kill. Koya opting to take out Nazimi instead of Shibi Senpai. Koya picking up a kill and Shibi Senpai getting away scot-free. Wait, wait a second. This is... Wait, 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 wait. Will Sylvia make the right call? No, it looks like Shibisa 5 does end up getting away. And also, somewhere else on the map, we did see a sorry, not a verse. We saw Aisu going down to Water Fudge, I believe, who's picking up their first kill of the game as well. But Goof is here trying to get in on this fight. Goof's ultimate is not available, though. Water Fudge maybe uh, noticing this and going back in for the re engage. Water Fudge. His build is pretty good for fighting Goof with all of that Enad on the Divine Fist. Extra normal attack damage ignores all of the defense of Goof's defense. Defense stack build. So perhaps this will be a good engagement for him, but Water Fudge is taking quite a bit of damage. Yeah, we are seeing Water Fudge going in ooh, with some really nice damage coming down with the glove skill. Goof is dropping quite low, but as you can see, Kiara is such a persistent character, and such Kiara is a character that can't farm very effectively. This is generally where you get your mastery from forming these short skirmishes, but you do need to be very careful. Play your limits properly, or else you will drop. Sitting at 400 HP right now, quite lucky that Waterfudge did not have his ultimate available to him, or Goof would have been as good as dead there. But speaking of ultimates, Goof's ultimate is back up, and he is absolutely zooming right now. Beautiful dodge from Waterfudge. The root will not come down. Goof Popping the ultimate to just barely survive there. Waterfudge still not having his ultimate available to him. It's going to be up in the next few seconds. And it looks like Waterfudge is trying to go back on the aggression here. But again, Goof has, just has so much movement speed to his name. An absolute ton of aim. <gasps> Beautiful ultimate over the walk. Great prediction. Waterfudge still going. Can he finish it before the root comes off? Yes, he can. Oh my goodness. Waterfudge. Beautiful re-engagement by Water Punch right over the wall. I don't know if he had console vision, and I don't really care. That was an insane re-engage by Water Punch. Just slamming that ultimate over the wall. Just saying, I don't care. You used your ultimate. I already saw it. I'm going in, and I'm going to take you down. And just like that, Goof does go down. Water Fudge picking up his second kill of the game with a beautiful performance. God, all of his combos look just so clean there. Beautiful dialing play. I did not expect this out of Water Fudge. Yeah, I've never seen him as a dial-in player, but again, some of these guys have been around for a very long time.
mains time and time again. So maybe there was a time period of water fudge that did start off with the dialing main and we just never knew. So, and I mean, he must have, right? There's just no way he's just randomly picking up for this tournament. He's clearly very comfortable on that character and he is just performing exceptionally well right now. Mizroy did pick up the wick line during that sorry that, that hype battle that was happening over there yeah every single game i swear i don't know how he does it every game i need to know his secrets because he gets it every single time but it i don't know he might not have the army knife already yeah he's going to dock to pick up the knife to make the frag rush but he does have the chinese opera mask to his name and the emerald tablet so he's looking quite strong looking at and superior taking a fight over here in hospital Ooh, ECU getting bursted by the Caltrops with the uh, sort of reversal combo by Superior One. ECU can be forced to hide behind the, the mail truck or whatever that is for the meantime. But also remember, Superior One is getting third partied by Kesher at the moment, and he is pretty stacked on uh, offensive items as well. But Shibi Senpai is also there as well. Like, this is a fight that could go to either of these players at any moment. Also, one thing to keep, to keep in mind is that despite all of this fighting, Gobu has been stacking up Animal Farm for about 232 stacks, which is maybe not as crazy as he's had previously at this point in the game, but that's still quite a lot of farm considering he is the highest in the lobby by a decent amount. Also, with the highest mastery as well, because all of that farm does give you a lot of weapon mastery. He's already at 14, while the second highest is still at 12. Keep in mind those two kills plus that mastery. It's a very, very good position to be in for our Nadine player, Gobu. Kasher. ECU. All of our amp based characters are kind of struggling against these people who have all of these uh, mithril armor and battle suits available to them. We're seeing, hang on, we, we saw we saw like one or two mithril armors earlier, but I think it's down to just one as uh, people have not quite gotten the mithril armor off of Goof's body. Um, but yeah, like we're seeing all these players transitioning into really anti amp pieces. Water fudge with the mithril armor. We're seeing. Uh, ba a battle suit coming out of Gobu. All these players respecting how much amp is still currently in the lobby. Optical camouflage suit, I know it's just a crit piece, but that's also pretty anti-amp as well. Mia's right versus Water Fudge, an engagement about to break out. Yeah, we're looking at Mia's right. Still not on the Fragorosh, but we're not beautiful all the way coming down. Just, my goodness, killing Water Fudge with pretty much zero chance to react. He's so Water clean. Fudge, yeah, that was so much damage. He knew his damage output perfectly and did not give any chance to react at all he killed him throughout the entire ground duration oh no ecu being forced into misery here he is down to just a quarter hp trying to get the re-engage with try maybe dance around but no misery will pick up just a free kill handed to him misery gonna be now on two kills is this gonna be his lobby this might be misery's game that he needed to break into that first place position he's been playing very consistently so far he's been getting a lot of points he was in the top six but is he gonna break it into first i don't know a verse did go down pretty early in this game gobu kind of doing pretty well too though so that is someone else he has to be aware of but also magnusave no kills but always there in the finals we're down to our last seven players and he's still alive he's still trucking around or well biking around in the situation and just doing what he does best he doesn't really care about anyone else in the lobby he pressured ecun so much a very close engagement between both those players they both ended up backing away from each other and like you said Beating ECU and just straight into Mia's right. He could not have predicted that Mia's right was going to be sitting there over in that strange corner. Yeah, no world would I ever walk in there and be like, wait, there is a full build, full health cat to here. That's, that's bad. I'm dead. <laughs> There's no universe where that ever happens. It's very unfortunate. But hey, that's one less player from Magic Safe having to deal about in this lobby. And definitely one of these harder matchups for sure. Mizroy, now with that massive lead with those transitional pieces, is going to try and push it in front, going into Kesher here. Ooh, Kesher having done the ultimate as we're seeing Kyoya is dancing around him. But I don't know. Kesher does have his dashes back up. Kyoya, the beautiful dash for wall. Mizroy with the cutoff. This goes to either player here. And it's going to go down to Kyoya for the second kill of the game. Yeah, Kyoya gets the kill. Mizroy trying to s sort of slice and dice his way to a double kill here, but it goes to, to Kyoya instead, and Kyoya's able to get away cleanly. That may be another kill. Wait, wait, hold on. No, it looks like Magnusape got to loot the body, so that's an advantage going to Magnusape. So something that is driving me crazy, and I do not understand why I'm seeing it this way. Why is Mizroy on three four score items and a Karn Wedden? What is happening here, and why is he not finishing a frag rack? Is this something we don't know about, or is he just looting these all off of bodies? Like, what? what is happening here? He got no no because he got a four so score off of Wick, right? So what is going on? Yeah, and he had the uh, Emerald Tablet prior to Wick, it looked like. So it looked like he got Helm off Wick. He had the tablet. Looks like one of the four scores went to the bottom pieces. And I guess he just never found a knife. That is the only explanation. Uh, 
No knife. That makes sense. Yeah, he, he went to dock. He tried to get one there, but he didn't quite find it. Magnusy catching Mia's right. Mia's right dealing a ton of damage in return, though. Magnusy kind of getting into that lethal zone and just opting to not go for the full engagement there, knowing that Mia's right was not quite in bike to kill range. Without that W, you do not have the sustained damage on Magnus. We are seeing all of our players being condensed just to the, the final cemetery location. Cemetery final zone is one of the, in my humble opinion, my humble caster's opinion, Cemetery Final Zone is one of the hardest final zones to play. There is very little room around this final square here to actually sit safely. There are no safe bushes, there are no safe corners, and there's not a whole lot of places to run either that don't put you right in the middle of console vision. So, it's going to be interesting to see how these six remaining players end up playing out the final square. Honestly, I kind of have to give the advantage to... Nobody. Nobody has the advantage here. I, I don't feel like Magnus really enjoys this final zone unless he's on the left side, but the left side is a scary place to be. Gobu has no, like, safe places to set up traps. Miyajori doesn't have a lot of walls to stun against people, or stun some people against, and Kyoya and Shifi Senpai, Superior 1, these players don't really have a lot of, uh, I mean, they, they have, sure, they have a, a, a Sudarsana and a Kelp, but they don't have a ton of, like, mastery compared to the other players. Like, 17 on Gobu versus the 12, 12, 13, like these players not a lot of mastery compared to uh, Gobu and, and Miyazori. There's a lot yeah, to Yeah, absolutely. Here. And this is going to be pretty interesting going into the final zone because, like you mentioned, it is kind of a free-for-all final zone. There is no way you can really hide. Ooh, beautiful! We get from Miyazori consuming Shuvi's Senpai's ultimate here, and we are looking at Gobu from the back like Kyoya oh from God. behind! Everyone just try to snipe this kill down! They know they can't kill Miyazori, but maybe they could try and scrap off from what he's fed. But man, it is just so scary. They need to deal with him as soon as possible. Oh no, Gobu finding himself right between Magnus and a wall. Not the place you want to be. The perfect angle for the stun from Magnus. But now Magnus just gets hard engaged by Kyoya and Superior One. Magnus falls before he touches the final square. And now Kyoya, and a lot of trouble is Miyazori. He's putting a ton of pressure on him. Kyoya will likely end up falling here. Beautiful ultimate from Miyazori. Will catch him and secure that kill. And just before you can blink, we're down to just three players as Gobu. Uh, Gobu Superior 1 and Miyazori are our final players here. Something I was going to mention before uh, suddenly everyone decided to kill each other was that yes, even if you cannot snipe the kill, ensuring that somebody dies indirectly gives you points because it puts you higher in placement. So Gobu, honestly, sniping Shubi Senpai there was 100% the right move. That gave him exactly what he needed to make sure that Shubi Senpai went down. That's another placement point for him or another like higher up placement points uh, set for Gobu. I, I respect that kill or I respect that snipe a lot earlier in Chapel. Now, okay. Oh, absolutely. Oh, go ahead. No, absolutely. If you're going to go in and you're going to try and, you know, even even get the fight down or maybe steal the kill. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you get the kill. And I always love to have kill more points for you. But at the end of the day, one less player means this final zone does become a little easier for you. Does give you more of an opportunity. Does move you up in that scoreboard. And right now, I think the person who's going to be having the hardest time here, unironically, it's going to be Mizor once the zone does close off, but I don't know. If Superior does manage to drop here, oh, I we hard could disagree. see potentially Mizoroi. I think Mizoroi is really? in the best shape right now. He is on a 228 defense. Insane. Like, everything he's got is giving him defense aside, aside from this frag rack. And, like, man, he's got movement speed like crazy. He's got cooldown reduction uh, on, on the, the Emerald tab, but not really a stat you get a whole lot of in the late game as Kathy with these uh, very high defense and offense builds. He's even got, like... It's so he's got so much defense. He's defense stacked out of his mind, and he's got a lot of spell damage reduction to sort of help him with the superior one matchup. Gobu is trying to find his way into this final square, and he just can't. But only ten seconds on Miyazori means he can't chase him into the red. But Gobu is down to ten seconds himself too, trying to clear out these smart bombs before it turns him into something he doesn't want to be a part of. This box right here could be essential for Miyazori finding those suture threads to stun someone into that box. Gobu now with zone control, pushing the rest of the players out of the zone. God, yeah, Mizroy yeah, is dropping pretty low here, though. Beautiful crossbow skill. Mizroy with the beautiful dancing around there. Gonna avoid the crossbow skill completely. And looks like we are seeing some focus going down to Mizroy here. They know they can't kill him in a 1v1. They're trying to throw that pressure as much as possible. Superior is trying to get Gobu out of the zone, though. They're just trying. Superior is just trying to get who he can at this point. He doesn't care who. He just wants to get whoever. Mizroy will pick up the kill on Gobu. The Wolves resummoning here, and he's just gonna auto attack him, get the lifesteal back up with the Chinese armor mask. We're gonna see Superior and Mizra in a 1v1, but that Mithra armor is just playing such a key role here. Superior's Along with all the lifesteal, Superior. 
Oh no, the Claymores are dropping. He is taking some pretty decent mana pots here though. But again, he's just not fast enough. Not at least, it can't keep up with the amount of abilities he is throwing out. And Mizroy, wow, only on five seconds left. Oh, he makes it back into the zone. We have two seconds left on his timer, so he's trying his best, but Superior One is out of mana, ticking as fast as possible. He's getting just enough spells in it, and everything is landing, but the Claymore does it! Claymore, Mizra goes back in for the re-engage. With no timer, he cannot chase into the red. That means Superior is able to get enough mana back, but Mizra is taking very good food. He is healthy enough to re-engage with a dagger skill, the bleed. That will surely be the end of Superior One. Oh, the shield prox! It will not be enough. Miyazori, a very confident and insane six kill first place. Beautiful work, Miyazori. Beautiful work. Uh yeah, we've seen it from every lobby. A different person has come out on top with six. Tom, you there, buddy? Tom, okay, so that's fine. The, the point is, is that Miyazori, with a six kill performance there, like. I I, I, I actually cannot believe what actually just happened there. The, the whole situation between these two players, w w Superior One taking as much mana as possible in that situation. He was trying his very best to, uh, to, to like get all the spells out while he could. I kept seeing him hit zero over and over and over again, but all his skills were actually landing. He tried his best to do as much damage as possible, but with the lifesteal coming out of Mia's Roy, it just wasn't enough. And in the end, Mia's Roy did end up taking it, but still a beautiful performance from both of those players. Also, Gobu, who ended up dying to the zone, just had only two seconds on his timer, and it did end up ticking down just in time for it to be a Mia's Roy victory. Victory. Uh, I, man, everything about that last square. Uh, once again, uh, these players, nothing but, uh, I, I can't believe it. Like, uh, all these final zone situations are always the most insane engagements between these players. Six kills on Mia's right. Unfortunately, Superior One, he had done so well, but he only ended up with zero kills, second place. A good performance nonetheless, but didn't quite get the kills he needed compared to those other players. And 50 DKP minus. Gobu, two kills, but didn't quite get more past that early game aggression. Now, Kyoya with three kills, a very good performance as well. EC Yoon had two kills, Water Fudge had two as well, despite sort of needy Yoker placements. Whew. That's sort of where we're standing right yeah, now. Tom. Was... Oh, Tom, you're back. What's up, man? Yeah, it looks like I had a little bit of a hiccup there for just a moment. Uh, it's funny because when you came back, you're like, Tom, what are you thinking? I'm like, oh. Uh... I don't know what I'm talking. What were we talking about here? But I just yes, talked about no, the results of all of those players and how they did in the match. Honestly, I, every match so far in in this finals has been a complete like highlight reel, fight after fight after fight, and match four did not disappoint either. Yeah, no, absolutely. And one of the things I love to I would love to point out is it hasn't been every single lobby we have seen a different person just absolutely crush it we've had one lobby that was somewhat tame but the rest of them you just had one player that is just coming out six kills first place six kills first place we had wombo we had east where's that easy we had uh, a verse we had uh Mizroy in this final game we had gobu it did just all came out and just destroyed one game and we have one more to go and man, I'm excited to see who it is going to be this time. So there's a few things we should talk about before we get into this final game. And of course, the first thing we need to talk about is scores. So let's shoot it on over to the score so you can see where our players are currently standing in terms of placement. In first place, we have been... We, the first place player has been dethroned once again. It is now Mia's Roy TV with 66 points of Pretty solid lead, honestly, over second place of Verse with 58 points. And in third place, we have Gobu, 50 DKP minus with 55. Tom, run us through the other three. So in fourth place, we do have Wombo from his insane pop-off with 43 points. Fifth place, we have Sleeping Line with 41 points. And in sixth place, we have Magnus Ape, easily the most consistent player in this entire bracket, I believe. Just always making it into a final circle is going to be there at 41 points this last game he did not touch the final circle but he, he was there in spirit yeah absolutely like uh, our top six players have been sort of shuffling uh, between each other's placements like over and over within all three of these or sorry, all four of these matches so far but the top six has sort of been staying as the top six we're seeing me is right averse gobu superior one magnus ape sleeping line these players have been at the top pretty much the entire time very consistently and i respect the hell out of that uh, one more thing I wanted to bring up is that 
honestly, the difference between 6th and 7th is starting to grow a little bit. We're seeing, well, actually, sorry, maybe not 7th, because Superior One's only 4 points behind Magnus Ape and Sleeping Lion, but Kyoya down there at 26, it feels like, you know, between 7th and 8th shouldn't be quite that big, but it's starting to grow quite a bit as our top most consistent players are really solidifying themselves in those top ranks. Um, that being said, though, first place is still anyone's game. We do have one final match where sort of everything is on the table for first, second, all the way down to 18th. Anyone could be anywhere. So we're going to see how these players end up bringing it. One thing that I'm very curious about is how are we going to? OK, <laughs> sort of a fun prediction. Are we going to see a fifth character come out of Aethers? We have to, right? Oh, I I feel like he just has to at this point. Like, he just doesn't have a choice. He's going to be there. He's going to look back. Four characters play, be like, I'm bored of you. I'll just go into another one, see what happens. Yeah, like, uh, I think at this point he's just having fun with it. Like, I've loved seeing everything that he's been bringing out, like, in all of these matches. I love seeing Aethers just sort of having fun with it, picking a different character, showing us a different build. I would love to see something else. Will we see Magnus? Who knows? It could be, it could be Shukai. <laughs> like, it could be anything at this point. It really could be. Um, oh, I don't know about Shukai. I, okay, I'm trying, I'm like, I'm like reaching into my brain right now. I'm trying to think like, what, <laughs> yeah. what does Aethers play? What else are we going to see from him? What, what does oh, he play? Oh, Zaheer. It's got to be Zaheer. If, if it's anything, it's going to be Zaheer. Like, it has to be like auto attack Zaheer or something. Like that, okay, you're 100% you're, you're right. You, you know your Aethers lore better than I do. Yeah, he is 100% a Zaheer player. Uh, yeah, I would not be surprised at all if we ended up seeing a Zaheer come out of him. Also, um, I do you, okay. Do you know who which player has really surprising? Like their their ranking right now is not insane, but do you know who has surprised me the most? Is Shuvi Senpai. Shuvi Senpai. Shuvi Senpai was a player who came into this as our only seated silver player in uh in the finals, and yeah, making it here and showing us some really crazy good uh nunchuck dial in play, fighting off Kesher, fighting off all these amp islands constantly. I've been really enjoying seeing them play, and I do want to see them uh, continue on that in the fifth game. Maybe have a crazy game. I want to see them hit the end zone. All that good stuff. Um, I'm also curious to see how Averse is going to end up playing this game. Because Averse, to me, in my experience with, with watching Averse in tournament play, he's sort of feast or famine, right? Like, he, he either has an insane game where he kills the whole lobby, or he kind of gets uh, maybe a little bit overconfident, or just kind of messed up by somebody in the early game and doesn't quite get to see that success. So I'm curious if we're going to see a really, really solid performance out of him in this final round, or if he's going to end up falling short. I really want to see something good out of him, though. I love watching Averse pop off, because he is the best hedge in, in the region, in my humble opinion, and his, like, when I'm playing with Name Hide on, I still know when I'm finding a verse like his movement is is so aggressive and intuitive. He knows exactly where his opponents are going to go and he predicts it perfectly. I, 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 I have so much respect for his hedge and play and I would love to see him do well in this round as well. Is there any players you're really keeping your eye on for this final round? I, hmm, the one player I would love to see break into his top six is Waterfudge. Waterfudge has been breaking out some very interesting picks for this tournament. He, I mean, he has my absolute favorite pick of this entire tournament, which is Lennox coming out with this super spicy character that I just did not actually see in this group in the slightest. And then he had the beautiful Lee Dai Lin play last game, which again, like it just blew my mind. So I'm super, super excited to see exactly what he could do. Now we are seeing him on the Razi and of course, just look at Aetris. Where is it? Where is it? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm scanning. I'm scanning. Where is it? Oh, I don't see him. Am I blind? Yeah. Oh, there, I, he's a certain fencer. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was looking for Izzy here. I'll be honest with you. I was looking for Izzy here. I was not looking for our, our one pant legged fencer, Fiora. The first time you've seen a Fiora so far in the finals. Not to say that Fiora is not great at the moment, but Fiora? Not a pick I was really surprising out of the, the players in this lobby. We're also seeing another swap. Did you notice it? Don't look at the screen. Yes, you have to tell me. Blind. Sama. Yes. On Aya. No, I, I saw it. I saw it. I was, I was waiting. He's on Sniper. Sniper Aya. Wait a what second. On, what on earth? Aisu pulling out that Sniper Aya. He has not been finding success on Zaheer today so far. So maybe a Sniper Aya is what he needed. Maybe he's been practicing it. I don't know. It kind of... I want to say it almost plays similar. The build pathing... Okay, I don't know about the pathing, but the building is sort of similar. You kind of have that, that like... Sniper sunset. I'm really reaching here. I don't know, dude. Like, uh, wh where, <laughs> wh what, what was anyone expecting? Sniper Aya out of Isu. Sniper Isu. I never would expect a sniper Aya coming out. I don't think I've ever ran on, ran into him 
in a game that wasn't him under here. Or Emma. I would have expected an Emma swap, but Aya? Sniper Aya of all things? That is not what I was expecting. I am excited to see some high class Sniper Aya gameplay oh, if he no. has been practicing that quite a bit. Ooh, we are seeing Gobu be the menace that he is. Nazimi is dropping quite low. He's getting to dodge this Q here. No, it is chunking. And this is really where the oh. one big weakness of Emma comes in. Wait, Superior. Oh no, Gobu's letting him walk away. Yeah, Superior goes in there for the kill secure, and Gobu is unable to get that kill, and well, he does get to loot the body, so he needs a few couple of items that he needed. Man, that is unfortunate. I'm sorry, Nazimi. Nazimi will end up falling in the final round of the ERCL solo finals. Gobu did not quite get the kill, but man, that is what you expect to see out of Gobu in Pond. Like, he sort of just griefs somebody, or not griefs, but he like, he's power spiking so hard right there, but anyone shows up, they are in bad, bad shape. Oh, Maze Roy again. A little confront confrontation there with Water Fudge, but neither players do have their boots finished just yet. Otherwise, that could have been a very, very dangerous situation for Maze Roy there. Looking like, looking like going to be a factory battle in just a moment. You mentioned this earlier. Tom? Oh, we may have lost him again. Okay, no biggie. To avoid oh. fighting in forest. You're back. Hey, welcome back. Wait, what happened? You sort of phased out there for a moment. You you, tra you traveled to a different dimension just temporarily, but you're back now. Oh goodness, I'm so sorry. It's no big deal. So we currently have Magnus Ape over ah. here doing his reverse uh, forest chapel factory version of uh, this this like tachyon amp Magnus that we've been seeing. Also, we do have Kyoya over here in a school. Ooh, tachyon brace and a Magnum bow. I've never actually seen that riding before. Is that something that we've been seeing more often lately on? Uh, uh, on Sylvia, I'm, I'm kind of behind on what the current Sylvia metas are in terms of their builds. Yeah, so am I. I don't, I don't think anybody knows Sylvia quite like these guys, though. I mean, Tachyon Brace, I, in my opinion, is one of the best boots in the game, and you can put it on just just about anybody. Has insane move speed behind it, has great stats with defense and cooldown reduction. It's just such, such a strong boost. So if you're able to make a new route because of it, it will definitely open up a lot of options. I mean, it's something we have been seeing coming out from some other players as well. You know, most notably here, ECU has been developing a new route with that Tachyon Brace. And, oh, we've seen it once. We've seen oh it twice, God. three, four, and make it five times. Shubi Senpai versus a heart. We're seeing Wumbo this time instead of Kesher sort of breaking the uh, the, the ancestry of these, these duels between these Amp Heart players and Shubi Senpai. This time, Wumbo going for that engagement. He's already transitioned over to the Stairway to Heaven. Or maybe, was this just a different build in general? He's not on Bohemian at all, actually. Aisu potentially going to find Wumbo over here. Whoa, those Qs are doing huge damage. Wumbo dropping down to just about 200 HP. Gets away though, Aisu with one more Q will connect, and Wombo goes down at the start of game number five. That is our second player to drop, Aisu already finding a lot of success here on this Sniper Aya pick. He's probably reevaluing everything he's done as a hero today, he's like, why did I just do this earlier? Now we're gonna see Sleeping Lion going down, Shubi Senpai, Shubi Senpai down to one Q left, gonna get the Wahop here, but we are one, you run away from one Sylvia, there is another Sylvia with max fuel right behind you, we're seeing Kyoya come in, Shubi Senpai just barely taken there, now Sleeping Lion is gonna try to get the re-engagement on Kyoya, no, just wants to do the body for himself, denying Kyoya of those resources, very unfortunate situation for Shubi Senpai. Yeah, I had to say that both Sleeping Lion there and Kyoya were pretty similar on items, so I don't think either of them wanted to test that, seeing as both of them were basically at the same point. But Kyoya does have finished shoes, whereas Sleeping Lion... Wait, what? Sleeping Lion had Healies before, but it's now on a freaking Boots of Hermes. Maybe getting the Force Core off of the body, maybe? I'm not sure how, but oh my lord, Sleeping Lion is looking real good right now. That is, that is, that yeah. is one heck of an early game item to be on day one Boots of Hermes. Yeah, he's looking really happy with this, but Goof, on the other hand, quite the interesting engagement here. As we were saying, Goof is not doing exactly a whole lot of damage here. Doesn't have that Burgundy finish, doesn't have an arm piece to his name. We are really just seeing Sleeping Lion just work through that damage, not really doing a whole lot. Averse oh, with no. the teleport to Beach, he is on poverty mode right now, and Sleeping Lion can sense it. He is going for the aggression, going on the tire. Averse is gonna get the ultimate down here, get the fear, but you do see Goof on the back player. 
uh, versus TPing in onto Sleeping Lion. Sleeping Lion is dancing around the chakrams here, trying to wait for his moment to re-engage. Again, that level 1 ultimate is on the 20 second cooldown here. The Boots of Hermes are going to help an absolute ton, but I don't know. Will Sleeping Lion actually be able to secure this? Well, the over versus down down, but Averse does have the option of going over the wall here. But then again, Sleeping Lion is on Sylvia, which is able to chase really well, but will opt not to instead. Honestly, oh my god, my heart was pounding there for Averse. I thought he was dead for sure, TPing right in between Sleeping Lion and Goof. That's not a position you want to be in, especially when your items are that lackluster at the moment. But luckily for him, he does manage to get away. And unfortunately for Sleeping Lion, does not manage to pick up another kill. But Sleeping Lion, thinking of picking up extra kills, might be catching Ghost Electricity over here, who doesn't really have as good of a place to run to. The fear does go out after he blows that ultimate. The omens are circling, but will they connect? Remember, that fear uh, like reset timer has been drastically increased, so it's much harder to chain fears on Hedgen at the moment. Ghost Electricity will end up going down as Sleeping Lion picks up his first kill of the finals. Or of the final, final round. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know yeah, what you're going to see right there. Wow, the, unlike Averse, he didn't have anywhere as a big two jump. Not a massive gap there. Really just forced to be jump over back into a very small uh, very small window there. It's not going to be about us. Absolute ton. Ooh, the fear creating just enough distance so the chain will be broken. But Goof is on the chase here. Averse how, still on the repaired slippers while a Goof is on the EOD boots. Not going to give his own timer to try and kill Averse here. Oh, Averse no. is going to be forced to take a ton of timer to get to the Hyperloop to be able to get out of the situation. Situation. Very, very rough start for Averse here. But hey, we've seen this happen to him before. He can definitely come back from this. Yeah, of all the zones to be fully closed at the moment, Pond and Hospital, the only two zones closed, were the two zones that Averse had to walk through. But that being said, I feel like if Pond wasn't closed, maybe Averse dies there. Like, I feel like Goof would opt to chase if there was not a red zone pressuring him. Uh, you know, a very interesting sort of situation there. And I'm, I'm, uh, man, I'm feeling for a verse right now. I, I like when you can't get your items online that quickly, it is very frustrating. Aisu getting caught over here by Sleeping Lion, who is currently snowballing out of his mind at the moment. Aisu does end up going down. That sniper Aya pick only doing so much work in the early game, but in the end, it will be Sleeping Lion picking up a kill. Goof, teeping right on top of a fight. How does he how does he do it? <laughs> I, I, that's insane. <laughs> He, great third party awareness and Goof is the man that knows where a fight is at all times and he wants to be there. But we are seeing Prismaticism trying to find success, success here with the Razi. But right now still with zero kills. Looking pretty built though. And as for that, I don't know. From the interesting picks right now, we're not seeing a whole lot. Ooh, we are seeing Isu trying to get the engagement here on Kestra. No, just saying get out of here. These are my wolves now. We are seeing Aetheris. And Prismaticism, despite the changes, have yet to find any kills to their name. Yeah, but he's already on, like, Aether is actually in pretty good shape right now. He uh, is on full build. This is a build that does spike very hard with a lot of crit, a lot of damage as well. Ooh, we're seeing Goof engaging on a superior one. Goof has been just really pressuring a lot of people all over the map. He was just an ally. He's already in forest and he's already found another fight. This man cannot stop taking engagements wherever he, he kind of just feels like fighting. Uh, superior one, though, just walks away pretty much full hp no issues there uh goof now with the ultimate down did not find something to reset on i do believe so that is going to be a shields down kiara and ecu is here Ooh, maybe about to get a kill chasing yeah, look at ECU coming in Okay, the ultimate here, gonna go for the dagger resets, getting a beautiful dagger resets there, able to get three daggers there, the Q2 is gonna be coming up here in just a moment, he is gonna have this dash reel to him, but again, Goof with the passive proc and those EOD boots is so fast, but one thing about this build is, again, it is very fast itself, does have the tacky on brace, does have the white crane fan, Burgonet, and the mount slicer, all the moon speed you could ever want, but it is just not enough to keep up with Kiara. Man, Kiara is just such a speedy character, so hard to get down unless you really, really catch him out of position. We're seeing a bunch of fights breaking out all over the map. We have Gobu, aka 50, 50 DKP minus, engaging over with Prismaticism, but also in the Chapel Cemetery area, we have Kesher, Sleeping Lion, ECU, and Goof, Superior One, Magnus Ape. All these players are in the area, like throwing poke down at each other, maybe trying to make something happen, but nothing is really quite coming of it. We are seeing Gobu trying his best to just kite out at Prisma. Prisma actually looking pretty good right now, despite not maybe having any kills but or really many RNG items, but he is in pretty good shape, I gotta say. Yeah, he's definitely looking pretty solid right now. One thing to know is when spawn and it is yet to be taken by Mizroy just yet. We're looking at Goof again, we're just having his ultimate up every five seconds. He, every time we look at this man, he just always has that ultimate available to him. 
Sleepy Lion going with the re-engagement. Does with the tire just barely. That's going to cost him quite a bit of fuel here. Wait but a Sleepy second. Lion does not care. Sleeping Lion is engaging or is chasing through the red. He yeah, he really doesn't care here. Goof is low and he knows the ultimate is down. This might be a kill going over to Sleeping Lion if he gets the slow with the wall. It misses just barely. The E misses as well. Remember, guys, that bike will still be on cooldown, but he pats backwards by accident. Goof goes down and Sleeping Lion picks up another kill. He's on three kills with a Scotty already? My lord, Sleeping Lion, you are looking rather nice at the moment. Also, Priz Prismat or Water. No, Prismat gets the wick. And Water Pudge is trying to take this fight. The ultimate land on Prismat's really low. It's really going to be anyone's fight. Any second Water Pudge ends up taking it. So that wick buff no longer on the map and not a factor here in the final round. Ooh, Water Fudge, good looks out there with the finished Mithril Armor and the Kelt already. I've been hearing a lot of uh, Razis in the past saying that it is not worth shifting off of that ease Electron Blaster to go to the Kelt, but Water Fudge says, no, I want to be on that Kelt. Yeah, I mean, Kelt is still quite a strong item, even if you are not getting as much damage over time the initial burst is going to be absolutely ridiculous to deal with and when you are dealing with a squishy mirror match like a rosy mirror match like that well it's gonna come out and just give you a little bit of an x factor to come out on top and well we just saw that happen right now water fudge with that kelt was able to take that fight Ooh, this is looking a little dangerous for me right the e is gonna drop down ecu going in oh looks like the q may have whiffed here he also dropping down gonna go on the dagger skill too yeah the q is gonna go back in but that is all the damage he has ecu will be dropping to me you hate to see it as a shoichi fan don't you tom unfortunately ecu was not <laughs> able to find the damage that he needed he was on the amazonist and amazonist just doesn't do a whole lot against me as right wait a second he picked up a force core off of ecu or at least the materials to make a force core he's already on a frag rack how does this I can't. every game every game man every game like he doesn't get wake for the first time ever and he's still just like there's a frag rack it just keeps happening how does he keep doing it man he got a blessing from Burr. Feels like, hey, look, you are going to be incredibly attractive. Also, you're going to get a four score every single game. Mizroy, <laughs> here you go. Have fun. Mizroy, good, looking good right now. Our only Kathy player, but really showing why they are so renowned on that Kathy Aethers. Ooh, going to be catching Magnus Ape in Chapel. Magnus Ape maybe seeing uh, his first game not hitting the finals. It has three players. They're all jumping up and that first is right there, too. Oh, Magnus Ape, my heart goes out to you as he does end up falling. I believe that was a versus. Oh, no, versus is not up at the moment. Casher in a lot of trouble. Aether sort of dictating the target. Bursting one person very low before everyone else jumps on them, trying to get that kill. Kesher jumping over the wall, trying to get away, but he will probably end up going down here as a burst. He's on him. One, two. Okay, whatever. Oh, it works too. Now, Aethers is all oh, bursting. A burst quite hard, but the fear does land. A burst being forced into the red as Aethers is showing why Rapier Fury is actually so good at the moment. Look at that burst. Yeah, that damage is absolutely insane. A burst, and well, Hedgen in general just doesn't really have a whole lot of a health pool to work with. And of course, one thing we know about Fjord is that the initial burst cap is oh absolutely God. devastating. Disgusting. That was an auto attack into a W. Half your health gone. A burst is deleted from the final game here. That will leave seven players remaining, guys, for the final game of the solos final for the ERCL. Skaz, who do we have left here? Ooh. We currently still have Mia's Roy TV, who was before this match, I believe, in first place on the standings. So this, now that a verse is done, because he was in second, this is still a very good shot for Mia's Roy taking this whole thing. We have Kyoya, Aethers, we also have Sleeping Lion, Water Fudge, Gobu, aka 50 DKP minus, our only Nadine player left. We also have Superior One on Emma. It's still anybody's game, and a lot of these players are in the top six in terms of ranking going into this round, so it wouldn't surprise me if it was still anybody's game to take first place. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me either. I, I can see any of these guys really taking that final circle, but again, we still have some time before that final circle is even introduced to us. We're only on day four right now. We will see that final circle, you know, be announced in the next zone, but... With that being said, players can always die off. With less players being on the map, less chance of you being third party. If, as long as you do have some vision with you, you will be pretty confident taking some of these fights. Namely, something like those Sylvias or that Rapier Fiora. Absolutely. Also, one thing to point out here is that both of our Sylvias are still alive. This is a character that has been seeing a lot of good performance lately on the ladder. 
And yeah, this is clearly showing you why it's so dominant. That incredible chasing potential, that incredible kiting potential with the slow wall, the knockback, the bike form, everything about it doing so much work at all stages of the game. Now, we're seeing Mia's Roy TV. He does not have Wick Buff despite having all of these incredible items getting chased down by Sibby Lion, who is in incredible shape at the moment. Yeah, Ooh. we're seeing Sibby Lion going in with the bike form. Beautiful dagger skill from Mia's Roy, just stalling out the bike just a little bit. And we are seeing Miesworth pretty much just topping off there with the lifesteal and some food taking. But Sleeping Lion will be getting third party by Superior, but it doesn't matter. With Sylvia's recent changes, once you're level 16, get rank 3 in that bike. Your bike has zero cooldown. It is going to be so, so hard to ever catch Sleeping Lion and really kill him. Especially since there's basically no windup on that higher rank bike. Like, this is where Sylvia shines the most. Like, Sylvia... In my opinion, her, her early game is still not even that bad, despite that early game being the thing that was nerfed the most about her. But now her late game is crazy good. Like you said, essentially no cooldown on the bike. Like, almost instant wind-up time and even faster speeds in general. Like, man, Sylvia is in such good shape at the moment. When it comes to disengaging and engaging in that late game, Aethers, our only Fiora player, our only Fiora pick of the whole entire finals, is trying to fight Emma and finding out why it is a rather difficult matchup. As Emma is able to, like, just blink away from you, kite you, put down a lot of Caltrops, it's really rough, man. Yeah, it's a very hard matchup. Emma just against pretty much most melees in general. It's just she has so many tools against the cow traps, the polymorph, and just a very strong ways of guaranteeing that damage is very, very hard to ever deal with the Emma. And Aetherus has probably one of the only matchups that he knows. Well, he now knows that he can no longer take. But along with the rest of the guys here, we are seeing this final zone be pronounced and it looks like it will be forced. We're seeing a massive convergence over here to the area to only two players and not here at the moment. That will be Aetherus and Sleeping Lion. Looking like Aetherus is trying to go a bit on the aggression here. He knows that he could do a ton of damage if he's able to get on Sleeping Lion. But again, Aetherus isn't very tanky. Only sitting at really oh 2,300 HP. Oh, the squirrel Whoa. trap setting up a farm over here. Yeah, Gobu's got the web down, making sure that no one gets into his little area that he is, uh, you know, sort of cornered off for himself. Uh, honestly, like, that's the sort of optimal way to play Nadine in these situations. Make your nice little safety net that no one can push through, puts you in a safe position. No one wants to fight there. Suddenly, everyone's getting forced into each other, and they're going to be having to fight each other in situations they don't want to be in and have less places for them to even go to once those fights go south. Now we have Mia's Roy TV engaging on a Kyoya, expecting that Kyoya is the weaker of the two Sylvia's, but keep in mind, now Kyoya's going to go get behind Gobu's little safe zone. He, If he wants to get out of here, he's got to go through s like six, five squirrel traps? That is unreasonable. Well, I guess you yeah, can't clear him out. Run into those squirrel traps, you will end up dying very, very easily. Water Fudge, cleaning Sleeping Lion, even though of all these people here, but Water Fudge isn't done fighting yet. That kill doing an absolute ton of damage. Gobu dropping down to a quarter HP here, but no, there's nobody here ready to third party. Oh no, the other Sylvia is waiting for you in your safe zone. It's <laughs> so no longer safe for you. They had to go through so many scroll traps first though. Like, imagine if those scroll traps hadn't been there. Kyoya could easily third party that, but now Gobu with the Q down and also at half HP is in a rough position here against Kyoya. And really, it's gonna be hard to rest here considering you also have Mia's right trying to third party. Oh my, I, how does this keep happening? Aethers takes down Water Fudge over here at the top. Despite this, honestly, really rough matchup for, uh, for Aethers, he does end up getting the kill there. A good kill by Aethers. Mizrae pushing Gobu out into the red zone as he is forced to find a new safe area. He finds this bush over in the top left, but remember, in a minute and a half, the zone will close down to just this final square. And at that point, all these players are going to have to funnel down the uh, top left side of Forest and maybe fight each other along the way. Yeah, it's a little concerning here for... Well, really, everybody. I mean, right now, of course, our... Well, we lost to Sylvia just a moment ago, but right now, it's looking like eight kind of in a nice position. Of Ooh. course, Gobu with all those stacks from earlier hunts is going to be looking kind of nice. They have the squirrel traps, but those squirrel traps are, no, are not going to be anywhere near as effective against someone with this much attack speed like Aetherus versus someone like Sylvia who doesn't really have any attack speed to their name. Mia's Warrior just kind of sitting on the sidelines just wanting to get some boars while Superior just says, I don't want any of this noise. I'm going to just wait at zone and let you guys come to me. So I have to say, like, if you're noticing that all four of these players are still here at this point, I would almost just make a mad dash for the final square because that is where nobody is aside from superior one. Now, Aethers is pressuring Kyoya, trying to get a quick kill here, taking him really low, but it looks like it might be Aethers who gets one, or sorry, 1v2 here between Gobu and uh, Kyoya, but Kyoya dropping really low. 
Now, I think Gobu sees this as a chance to maybe kill off Aethers while he is the most vulnerable. Both Aethers and Kyoya are going to be forced to go into uh, the red zone of Avenue to try and teleport out. Kyoya with like no max HP, or sorry, no remaining HP, and almost no timer to work with Aethers with only 20 seconds left on his timer. But now Gobu and Mia's right. They're stuck at the top of Forest with only five seconds left until the zone closes. Gobu, there's no yeah, time. Really you really awkward. Go, buddy. 26 seconds. Oh, no. It looks like I, I, I can't imagine Gobu is very gr greeting for that oh! food. He possibly didn't have any. The beautiful suture threat oh. from Mina's right holding him in place, and in the end, it will be Aether who gets the kill. But my god, Kyoya did end up going down there. A beautiful stun by Gobu. Aether's dropping very low. He is only five seconds in the zone. He gets the kill, so he gets more timer. Miyazori has only seven seconds. As long as he can stall it out, Gobu will end up winning this fight, but it's not going to matter. Miyazori gets the kill. It's a 1v1 between Superior and Miyazori. I've seen this fight before. Yeah, we've seen this fight before, but again, now we're seeing Miyazori down to two seconds, and he is... Ah! He is missing some components, but Superior is still looking quite strong. I don't know. If Superior is able to get the damage down, we could see a turn here, but right now, Miyazori with the beautiful Sutcher is going to take... Superior down to just a quarter health. Gonna force Superior out of the zone. Superior does have oh, way more time. Mizroy! Mizroy! What? 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 Oh. What? What? Just happened, Tom? <laughs> When did Emma learn mind control? Uh, what? Oh. what? Okay, so well, I mean that's gonna be a win for Superior One. Congratulations! That was one of the strangest endings I have ever seen. This tournament does not stop surprising me, man. It is nonstop. <laughs> what? Of words. I, I, have got, I have nothing. I don't what know what happened there. What about that? What? His <laughs> first place for that round was Superior One. He got two kills. Yup. Second place was Miyazuri with two kills also. Uh, third place was Gobu. 50 DKP minus with one kill and Aethers uh, fourth place with four. Wow. Aethers with the most kills in that lobby. And I, I do have to sort of say Sleeping Lion with seven, or sorry, not seven kills. Seventh place with three kills was a very good performance as well. And Water Punch with two and sixth. What? I'm, I'm trying to regain my composure. I'm... I got nothing. I My brain is fried. I got nothing, man. I, I he, his brother took his mouse. Maybe, okay, wait, what if Mia's Roy knew that he won? What if Mia's Roy was like, I'm good, man. I don't even need to fight you, bro. Like, I got my points. I'm in first. I'm taking this whole thing. I don't care if I just go die of the zone. Give me my cash faster. You know, like, what if he just... What? Honestly, I, I can see that coming out of Mia's Roy. He's, a, he's a snarky dude. Yeah, I can see it. I can see that too, man. Well, I, that's it. That's the conclusion. That was the final round of the ERCL. We have the final scores. We know who won. Do you want to go over there? Tom, you want to check out the, the scores? Oh, absolutely. Am I, am I the one announcing this? Let's do it. Yeah, you're going to announce it, man. All right. All right. So first place here. Congratulations to Misroy TV with 84 points. The first ever winner of the ERCL solos finals congratulations means right in second place we have 50 dkp minus on 68 points aka gobu congratulations friend and in third place guys in third place we have a verse our uh, most consistent hedging player of the tournament with 66 points a beautiful showing by a verse congratulations on that third place placement in fourth place we have superior one our emma player who sort of just shot up there at the end with very nice performances in games four and five with 59 points in fifth place we have sleeping lion 55 points a very very good performance from our sylvia main sleep excuse me sleeping lion and also in sixth place i will try not to be biased as a fellow magnus enthusiast we have Magnus Ape, 
in sixth place with 44 points, just narrowly beating out his, his competition of Wumbo in seventh with 43. I do want to give a shout out to everybody who participated here in the finals, as all of you played insane to even get here in the first place. There were three rounds total these players had to get through, each one cutting to the top six. We started with 168 players and we end with just 18. So getting here alone was an insane feat from all of these players. So congratulations for making it this far. Congratulations to everybody for coming out and playing so well. Now, there is one thing I wanna talk about. We do have our winner, which means we also do have the opportunity to interview them. So if we do manage to get them uh, sort of set up for this interview, we will be uh, talking to Miyazori TV real soon. But Tom, do you wanna unpack this whole finals? Like, tell me, tell me more about how this all went down. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Mizoroi, to become the victor here was not easy. My, he had to go through a brutal bracket of insane players, and he had to go through the best of the best, climbing up to this very final stage, down to five games, and we saw some of the most consistent gameplay out of anybody, right? There's a reason he took it all. He was, and I think the biggest contributing factor is his wickline pressure. Every single game, he was prepared, and he was always pressuring wickline. You never really saw him actively be the one going for it, rather being the person walking around and waiting for other people to go for it instead and pressuring them off and taking all the components for himself. This uh, enabled him to transition into those very strong items such as Fragorosh, the Chinese Opera Mask, the Mithril components, and just let him snowball such a strong lead afterwards. We saw this earlier in Game 4, where he was in that final circle and he just killed everybody out of the six players. He just took everybody out one by one by one and it was such a hard situation to deal with not really much you can do if you are the opposing players i but i mean aside from mizroy we have to give credit to where credit is due to the other guys here averse with the hedge and play having a very 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 rough final game really only able to gain that one kill but we saw him have an insane pop-off game himself getting six kills bringing down to the absolute brim of his timer the following game and just crushing it throughout this entire tournament series same story with him we saw him during the qualifiers just sweep through his bracket it didn't even look remotely close and he was definitely one of the favorites to take this so his placement is definitely not much of a surprise to anybody and of lastly in I do apologize there. Lastly, in second place is somebody, well, if you do play the game at a higher level, you prize him quite a bit, is Gobu 50 DKP minus yeah. has been absolutely in love with that Ballista Nadine lady. He's been labbing it. He's been going out. He's been testing in every single mode. It is his little baby. He just, he just loves that thing. Okay. And he put on, again, fantastic showing. Real quick, I want to interrupt you. We do have our interview lined up. So I'm going to be pulling him into the channel. Let's talk to Miyazori, our champion of the ERCL solo finals. Miyazori, are you there, my friend? Uh, hello. 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 Congratulations on your first place placement. How did you feel about your victory? I feel really good, actually. I wasn't expecting much because uh, I mean, I don't think Kathy's that good of a pick in competitive play, but <laughs> I was I actually impressed myself. You did a fantastic job. You were very consistent throughout the entire tournament. And honestly, like, man, that that huge pop off win in the fourth game and I, I, I will call it a second place in the fifth game. But what on earth happened there at the end of the fifth <laughs> game? What happened there? Let's just say I thought I had more than two seconds. <laughs> okay, so it was an accident. It was an accident. Yeah, I was trying to stop his rest, but then, yeah, uh, I kind of forgot. <laughs> I respect I do that it. a lot, actually. I, I respect it. Honestly, like that. Hey, that that aggression is kind of what I've come to expect out of you. Your 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 play on Kathy is very like it's a pleasure to watch because you're always so consistent you always are on that frag rack like every single game like you're always pressuring wick at the right times i feel like there's no sloppy play coming out of you whatsoever was there anything that you prepared for this tournament so was it like for the, for the finals like specifically to beat this lobby or did you just sort of come here to play your best game not really paying attention to your competition too much um, I just played my best game, honestly, because I do this in ranked games too. I just try to transition to frag whenever I can, because it basically doubles your damage. And I just play for RNG items, kind of like a Nadine. Yeah, honestly, like when I, I when I had played like a lot of Kathy on her release, I sort of had that same feeling of like, 
my I feel like a strong character, but as soon as I get that frag rack, I'm like, I am a character now. Like I have that double damage. I have so much more agency to chase people down. Like I could see why you would why you would want to do that for sure. Uh, one more thing I wanted to ask you was this is the first ever ERCL. You had to go through 168 total players to get here and emerge victorious. How do you feel right now? Dude, I don't know how to feel. I'm like freaking out right now. Are you I, like shaking? Were you, like, are you nervous? Yeah, I'm shaking. I was shaking before the turning and I'm shaking now. That's really cool, man. As a relatively like newcomer to the, the ERBS scene, you've taken the scene by storm and you are you were the first ever player in North America to hit Titan, which is an incredible achievement in of itself. And now you're the first ever victor of the ERCL. Congratulations, man. Do you want to give any shout outs or, or plugs or anything before you go? Um, I would like to shout out Tom Sorcer. He definitely, uh, yeah, he improved my Kathy play because I run into him a lot and then I just slap him. <laughs> Tom, are you just going to take nice. that? Ah, I swear. Okay, I will. Can I pull up a match history? Because I'm going to pull up one from yesterday. <laughs> you know, he gives me a, he a confident nice boost for this, for this tourney, I think. Aww. That's... I'm block. I'm blocking him after this. <laughs> so sweet. Uh, sort of. <laughs> Do you want to maybe plug your, your Twitch, your, your socials? What's uh, where, where, where can people find I you? I do stream. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you stream? Is Roy. I, I try to stream. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just me as Roy. That's pretty much it. Well, cool. Thank you so much for coming by, man. We appreciate you coming here, showing us such amazing games. And thank you for talking to us here at the ERCL. We hope to see more of you in the future, especially in future events. I hope to even see you in some of the team tournaments, too, because I'm not sure I've seen you. I, I've seen you kind of grinding lately. I believe with was it with Water Fudge on, on ladder. Or, or, uh, or... I play with Tony. He's oh, Tony, with Tony. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys have been doing really well in the duos ladder, too. So I look forward to maybe seeing you guys in uh, some of these team tournaments. But thank you so much for joining us. And um, we'll catch you in uh, another tournament, man. Thank you so much for hosting the tournament yeah. as well. Yeah, no problem, man. All right, we'll catch you later. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Okay, so uh, I believe that is going to be Unless we have any more interviews. Hey, let me double check to see if uh, we had Gobu on deck. Do we have Gobu? Uh, but yeah, so, dude, uh, Mizroy, like, I expected good things out of him coming into this, but I'm actually, I I'm thrilled, man. I'm actually thrilled. No, he played absolutely out of his mind. And even though he did have to put a little jab into me, fight me farming him earlier, he definitely is has been incredibly incredibly consistent throughout all of these games i mean first player na to be titan probably gonna be one of the first ones to reach a mortal i tell you guys if he can still manage to get those games but man he played out of his mind today i i couldn't be happy for him okay so we actually do have gobu as well ready to be interviewed so we're gonna pull him in here and talk to our uh our nadine menace gobu gobu are you there Hello, hey, guys. Hey, how's it going, man? So you just placed second overall in the first ever ERCL. How are you feeling right now, man? Uh, I'm feeling good, uh, especially since like the first tournament you did, uh, what, back when it was still branded as ERCS, mm -hmm. I kind of qualify. So this kind of felt really refreshing for me because I just felt like I kind of wanted to prove myself since there hasn't been, I didn't have any performances to back up my, what I know is my high level of play. Yeah, and so you've been bringing, like like you said, you, you kind of struggled over there in the ERCS, which is sort of a bad feeling, but here in the ERCL, like I just talked to Misery about this, you went through 168 players to get here, and even amongst the best of the best, the cream of the crop, you were there in second, which is a very fantastic performance. What got you there? Was it was it your was it your homework? Was it your studying? Was it your grinding? Was it your character pick? What was it that really was your key to success? I think it was just a lot of the grinding I did. Uh, so pretty much every game I was playing in solo queue, I was more or less uh, like running myself in my head, like the plays I should do ahead of time. And I think like actually playing solo queue, like ranked, uh, actually helped me a lot because pretty much like the people I play in ranked every day, I, I played in this tournament. And yeah, it was just all the grinding really, it really helped me in the end. Yeah, I, I, I've, I mean, you and I are good friends. I, I know how much you've been preparing for this. I've been seeing like the, the practice you've been putting in. It's, it's been an insane amount of preparation. You've also been studying your opponents extensively. Um, 
was there I, I saw you playing several different routes on ballista too you didn't just go to pond you didn't just go to temple what was sort of your thought process in switching between pond and temple as much as you did well i think the first game uh i did the uh my pond route because uh, I like so I saw another Nadine and I know I could like fight that Nadine. So part uh, part of having two Nadines is uh, you, you like you cannibalize each other. You just fight for each other's farm. So I wanted to kill that. I wanted to kill the Nadine in my first game, and that's what I did. So that's I think that's what helped me win the first game. Uh, and then for the second game, uh, I mean for the game I switched to Temple. Uh, I just I decided to switch to Temple because I just thought uh, Avenue was getting like really contested. I was having more people around me, and something I was trying to avoid was the Hessians. So Hessian uh, goes up to uh, goes up to archery archery range at the end of night one sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of scared of dying to that. So I kind of want to avoid that. So that's why I went to my Temple route. Cool, I like it. Those are some good adaptation adaptations. Really, uh, really understanding the lobby and how they played. Um, so going into this final uh set of games was there any person in particular that you were like kind of trying to avoid or was there anyone that you felt like you could really f like go after like were there any routes that you were really trying to contest i don't think i was really trying to contest everything i was just trying to play nadine play my own game rat jam farm <laughs> yeah you know pve gamer you know <laughs> every single round like you you were by far ahead of everybody in weapon mastery because your farm was nuts man it was very good. Yeah. I think I had like my my farm routes were actually relatively uncontested. So like I would have so, so I was just stronger than people at the like when I got to like archery range and stuff what and whatnot. So I would just farm that and then just move on somewhere else. And I was able to avoid like people like averse and whatnot and so I think that helped a lot. But I think the person I was actually scared of the mo most uh, was our first place winner, Mies Roy. Yeah. Especially in that one game where I pressed I pressed tab, he had Fragorak. Uh, Mithril Armor, Aqua Dude. Mask. Yeah, he <laughs> kind of knew the game was over at that yeah. point. There was like one game where he was on like all six max gear like transition pieces, and I was like, what on earth? How are you supposed to beat that? But man, you played so well. You made it to the end square almost every single game, and you played brilliantly. So congratulations for your second place placement. Is there any uh, any final thoughts, any, any shout outs or, or plugs you want to make? Uh, I just want to thank you all and Tom. Uh, this tournament was really great. Thank you. And I knew that, uh, I knew I could have trust, once you were announced as the head of esports, I knew I could trust <laughs> you with uh, with the future of this game. Thank you. So, I, I appreciate thank you. that. I, I'm humbled. Aw, that's so sweet. <laughs> Well, thank you, man. We appreciate you stopping by and doing this interview with us. Congratulations once again on your second place placement. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you maybe in future uh, team tournaments as well, but at the very least, looking forward to seeing you competing again in the future. So thank you, Gobu. Thank you for stopping by. Yep, thank you. So guys, that's going to be it. We've talked to our top two. We have gone through all of the rounds, the qualifiers, the semifinals, and the finals, and it concluded just like that some of the most insane action i have ever seen coming out of eternal return black survival if you thought this game looked interesting maybe you haven't played it before you're just stopping by to check out this crazy action it's free on steam you should come check it out it's a great game and honestly it's a lot of fun you might find yourself enjoying it more than you thought and uh i want to give a, a couple quick shout outs for for us here at the ercl before we send it off for the night i want to give a massive shout out to my boy tom sorcerer over here on my right for for joining me as my co-caster for both this here and the qualifiers tom thank you so much do you have any final thoughts as well oh it was my pleasure man i i had an absolute blast you know this has been we we did uh this we did the ercs we talked a long time ago about doing something very similar to this so to finally actually see it and see it come out in such an official capacity and seeing you run it it, it really does bring a smile to my face you truly deserve the position that you got and man it, I, I had a fantastic time today thank you for putting on this fantastic show today guys and alt you're making me blush <laughs> thank you tom <laughs> so thank you so much tom i also want to give a massive shout out to alteris who has been running our production side this entire event so alteris thank you so much for all the work that you've been doing could not do it without you i also want to give a 
enormous shout out to all of our tournament mods and tournament tournament uh, uh, volunteers who have been helping throughout all of the qualifiers, the semifinals, and today. I, I cannot say this enough. This would not be possible without everybody who has been here chipping in and assisting. So I, I seriously, guys, thank you so much. Everyone, please thank these tournament moderators. They've been doing a fantastic job of making sure everything runs smoothly on time and consistently couldn't do without you. Love you guys so very much. But guys, that's going to be it for us over here at the ERCL. This was the first ever ERCL and the first ever major official North American tournament. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a great time coming out and watching all of these games. But that's going to be it for me, Tom, Alteris, moderators, everybody, and everyone here at the ERCL. So thank you all so much for watching. We will see you guys probably pretty soon as we have the ERCL duos event picking up sometime about two weeks from now. The uh, the uh, the sign up for that event will be likely next weekend. So keep your eyes out for that. If you want to be involved in some more crazy NA competitive action, it'll be duos next. So keep your eyes out. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you guys next time.